my fellow Americans, and the rest of the herd, welcome to the most ambitious undertaking we've ever done here at Heavy Cardboard. So welcome uh, to what is going to be an epic series. I am very, very excited. Uh, so obviously we are featuring Mr. President, designed by Gene Billingsley, published by Mike Berticelli, and published or developed by Mike Ber Berticelli and published by GMT Games. For those that don't know, this is my most anticipated game of all time since I've been in this hobby and it has lived up to expectations. I would argue it has surpassed expectations in some ways. This is the biggest game scope wise as well as depth that I've ever tackled and played and I am really, really, really excited about this. That's why I've dedicated an entire week of the channel to this game. A, it's going to take that long to play and B, uh, I think it deserves it. Um, this game is not going to be for everybody. Let, let's face it, a lot of y'all that watch this, uh, your only experience with Mr. President is going to be watching this and that's okay. But for those that want something this grand in scale, then I think you're, you're going to be really excited and you're going to be pleased at what you see. So for those that are experienced with the game, welcome. I, I welcome your input and opinions and thoughts because let's face it, at some point throughout the next week, we're going to make mistakes. It's inevitable. Um, I would argue even, even the most seasoned players of this game will make mistakes. It's okay. It's all right. We're going to do our best. Uh, yeah, but, but that said, um, if you are new and you haven't played the game, have no experience with the game, then welcome. I don't think you're going to find it as daunting as it seems like it should be. It's going to be a blast. I... Yeah, I'm excited about this. I hope you all are as well. Thanks everybody for joining. I see that we have Mike uh, Berticelli, the developer, the lead developer uh, for Mr. President in chat. So Mike, thanks for taking the time joining us. I appreciate it. I'm hoping Gene, maybe Jason, will be able to stop by as well throughout the, the next week. But without further ado, let me give you an overview of what it is we're gonna be doing this week, and then we're gonna dig into it, all right? So it's a seven part series. And decided on a seven part se series, not because I like the number seven, but because I figure that kind of makes the most sense and pacing wise for this, barring any unforeseen things. I mean, it's live, right? It happens. So part one today is going to be set up and an overview of the game. And that's it. I've never done that before. I've never asked you all to come watch a stream of me just setting up a game without the payoff of actually learning the game and playing the game. I think this one deserves it because it's involved. But the way I have it set up, to set it up, if that makes sense, I think will help you all that get the game and I think it'll pay dividends to uh, make your setup uh, a little bit easier going forward as well. So that is going to be today. Then every day at 10 a.m. Eastern, so 1000 Eastern, that is, let's see, 1600 across the pond, do the math for the other places. Every day this week, uh, I'm gonna be in here streaming it. Now, uh, this is a solo only game, obviously, but James is going to be here as a senior advisor to the president, and he and I are going to tag team this. You'll see how it works. We have it all planned out. I'm not gonna divulge more than that, but that said, that's going to help uh, keep the pace as well as keep you all engaged as well as myself, I think. But tomorrow is going to be the, the game takes place over four years. I suppose I should start with that because that is a term of a president, barring re-election or impeachment. Anyway, four years. So tomorrow is going to be the ha first half of year one. Then on Tuesday is going to be the second half of year one. Then on Wednesday is going to be the whole kit and caboodle, year two. Then Thursday, year three. Friday, year four. Then Saturday, I'm hoping that James will be able to join us for that, is we're going to wrap things up and we're going to have a very involved, very uh, long, in, in depth, I think would be a good way to put it, uh, round table as well as just kind of wrap up and discussion about our thoughts on the game. 
So that is the plan. Also, Saturday gives us a little bit of if we fell a little behind schedule, we can do that. We're anticipating today being two to three hours at most, probably closer to two hours. I like to talk. Could be three. We'll see. Uh, tomorrow, probably about three, four hours. Same with Tuesday. And then it's going to be six hours a day from then on. So we're anticipating the whole thing to be about 26 hours, give or take, for now through the discussion. Yes, that is crazy. And I realize that the, the game page and the box itself says uh, six to 10 hours. I'm not going to say they lie. I'm just saying that's ambitious. So streaming obviously adds some time, but I, I think 20, 25 hours for the full campaign game for the full four years feels about right. So with that said, that's what we're doing. I'm excited. I think you all can tell if you're a patron or you are a fan of the show, you know for the last handful of weeks since this has arrived, uh, you know how excited I am about this. Hopefully that, that, that spreads the excitement to y'all as well. I think y'all can, can uh, live through that and with that. Oh, also, one more big thanks is to Tony Curtis. Uh, he's been kind of my point of contact with GMT for the last number of years. He's had his personal copy, his reserve copy sent to me so that we could do this. So a huge, huge thank you to um, uh, a good friend I would consider, even though I've never met him in real life. So Tony, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for this. Uh, the last thing before we get started, GMT has a second edition planned for this in the first quarter of 2024. Now, with that said, there is about 20 pages of clarifications, errata, and all of and FAQ type stuff. That sounds excessive. I'll be honest, I have zero qualms having the first edition. Are there a little bit of clarifications that could be, of course, a game of this scope, totally. But I guess what I'm telling y'all is, if you're excited about this, if there wasn't a second edition and all of that other stuff, I'd be okay with it. With that said, I'm going to try and incorporate as many of those uh, clarifications and changes that GMT has been kind enough, Jason over at GMT is kind enough to forward me the latest greatest that they have on that so that I can get it as true to form as possible. But let's face it, if this happens, um, you know, I get the updated stuff. Maybe we have to stream it again. Oh, shucky darn. All right. If y'all are ready, I'm ready. Let's dig into it, shall we? Welcome to Mr. President. Okay. Woo. Yay. There she is. That's it in all its glory. Minus the chits. Now, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. All right. Now, with this said, um, let me go ahead and tell y'all, this game is not hard. It is not difficult. It is not the complex. I, I, Rocky said it earlier today. The complexity of Mr. President is in its depth, it is in its scope, in its breadth. It is a deep game. There are a plethora, Hefe of choices that you are going to have to make throughout this game and react to the world. However, as daunting as it looks, it's actually very easy to play. I, if you play the games that we feature on Heavy Cardboard, I promise you, you can handle this with ease. With ease. Legitimately. This isn't a sponsored stream. GMT's not paying me for this. Um, I, I really don't have a dog in a fight whether or not you play this and you buy this. But I just really want to kind of set that tone that even though this is massive, it's not a hard game to play. Okay? All right. With that said, <laughs> there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten manuals in this game. Is a big boy game. There ain't no doubt. But... Let's go ahead and go through this a little bit, kind of as an overview of what it is. And I went through this briefly 
when I did the unboxing, but let's go ahead and do this. This is the rule book, the governing manual. This honestly is a reference manual, okay? That is what this is. This is the, the biggest book here, and it's just really good for clarification and to get more explanation of things, the GM manual, so the governing manual. The game also comes with a really nice linen finished piece of paper uh, from your predecessor. Uh, I read this during the unboxing. If you were so inclined, go listen to it. All right, so that's what that is. Then, the how to play, shockingly short. I'm not kidding that this game really isn't that hard. That's it. That's shorter than most, by far, the overwhelming majority of the rule books that we play. That's it. So, there's that. The scenario book. This is your setup stuff. So, this is the thing that we're going to be using to set up the scenario, uh, which we are going to be playing the big sandbox game. And our setup goes all the way through there on page 12. The rest of this is just different scenarios from 2001 to 2020. So we're gonna set this one aside because we're gonna be referencing that quite a bit today. And then after that, we don't have to touch it. Presidential briefing, examples of play and designer notes. Highly recommended to go through this. Um, kind of basically gives you some hints and tips as you go through as well as an example of play. So definitely recommend, but do you, do you need this during the game? No, you don't, not at all, really. And then, the rest of these, the rest of these you will be referencing throughout the game. These are mandatory, okay? And those are the domestic charts, the world charts, and then there is the Russia peer, uh, the world peer Russia acts. What this means, when Russia takes their turn, they do this book. It's, it's pretty sizable, but again, it's very procedural, it's very easy to run through. When China acts, they have the exact same, well, not the exact same, but the equivalent for Russia. So when Russia, uh, when Russia acts once per turn, possibly twice, maybe more, but I digress. And then when China acts, you do this one, cool. And then uh, this is, you will be referencing four times each turn whenever the ally and rogue states. So we have chits here, whenever those act, there, then you're going to be going through this. So you will go through this whole book once per turn. You will go through each of these once per turn, possibly twice, we'll see how that works, okay? These you will reference numerous times throughout the uh, a turn. Same with this bad boy. So that takes care of all of those, all right? Then we have, there are five punch boards, one of which I've completely emptied. Some of which you'll see, I haven't had need of these chits thus far, so therefore, I haven't punched them, but I'm gonna keep them handy in case we need them throughout our playthrough. But there's only five uh, sheets of punch boards. Let's face it, that's far less than a lot of the games that we play. And then there is the turn sequence flip book. This right here, and I love that it's spiral bound. Let me point this out. This is one turn. You will go through this entire book four times. And this is a step-by-step -step what to do every action on every turn. It is wonderful, it is thorough, it is clear, it is pretty concise overall. Um, you still will need to reference the other charts and manuals, but this will step you through the whole thing. If you follow this, and I cannot stress this enough, don't breeze through it, like don't skip sentences, don't. Read everything as you go through it. As you get more comfortable with it, then you can maybe, oh yeah, it's this. But if you skip sentences, you're gonna mess it up. Don't do that, take your time, enjoy the process. Enjoy this, okay. So that is this. Obviously, we're going to be referencing this constantly throughout the game, all right? So that is that, but we will not need it today because we don't need it until we actually start the game. Set that aside. These two, this sheet, you will not see after today. All this is, is a place to put chits. That's it, it's just a chit holding piece of cardboard, cardstock, okay? So this, I will show y'all once we have it all done. This is actually going to be staying right over here. I have a table set up, and that's going to be 
holding area for that, as well as uh, other things, manuals. I'm going to have another one on this side. James will have some on his side as well, all right? This, you will see from time to time. This is the war track. Doesn't come out often, doesn't get used often, and, you know, theoretically could have up to five wars happening at the same time. God, let's hope not. Okay, but this, uh, we're not going to see this until maybe day one, year, you know, the first half of year one, but realistically, um, this is not going to be coming into play too, too much throughout the entire thing. But it's nice to have to be able to keep things organized and to keep track of the various wars that are happening here in the world. So we're just going to actually, we're going to set that aside for right now. All right, the last thing that I didn't have on screen, because honestly, these are very white and it's so bright in here, got to wear shades. And uh, yeah, these four things are the master actions. We have the presidential master actions. We have the domestic master actions, which these are all double-sided, as you can see. Then we have the diplomatic. So think of it this way, presidential, only the big boss, AKA I, can do these. When my cabinet is acting, they will be able to do various different things. Domestic actions. Hey, these are things that have to do with here in the country uh, at home. Diplomatic. These, my cabinet will be taking actions in the rest of the world stuff. And finally, military master actions, which we will have to do from time to time as things uh, happen. Now, as the president, I can work, I can choose actions off of any of these charts. However, or any of these uh, master action charts. However, the various folks in my cabinet, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, can only do certain ones on certain sheets. Obviously, only the big boss can work off the presidential, but others can work off the other ones. But obviously it's me choosing acting as them. All right. So these we won't need again until we actually begin play as well. And now we have the board. All right. Now it looks intimidating, but oh, it's really not. And I got to say, I am so, so, so grateful that it was one of the owners of GMT that decided to create this game. Because I assure you that if any other human on earth decided to design this game and brought this to a publisher, they would be laughed out the door. They would just be told to get the hell out. But when you own the company, you can kind of make those decisions. And the reason I say that is, y'all see this? You see where it says turn sequence? This... There is a chit we, that we will break out here in a little bit that starts here, and then it goes here. Through all of these steps, each one of these steps, congrats, that's the end of one turn. That is so comical that literally only the owner of a company, of a publishing company, could possibly say, okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. So it's really not that hard. The game only takes place over four turns. And here is one turn. Like, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> this excites me more than anything in board gaming. The fact that this exists and it spells it out so, so well. And it does it so well. All right. It's really not that hard. Just. Just follow the steps. It's only 50 steps per turn. But before we get into the rest of the actual setup, let me show you all this. This turn sequence, you all see where it says right here, US Special Activations. This actually steps you through. It tells you what it is. Hey, do all these steps. There you go. That's how it's going to go. But look at this. Beginning of each turn sequence, it highlights where it is, and it says here, Determine how many APs you start. It literally walks you through every one of these steps. Some of these you don't do in the first, uh, the the first year. But okay, set your set your focus for your cabinet. Okay, walk you through it. And then hey, one action for POTUS. POTUS is President of the United States for those not familiar. So that is that is me in each cabinet member. And then here, and then just just step through it. It's really really. 
not that bad. And then, hey, in activation phase one and three, you go through these steps and walk. Whoa, what happened there? That was weird. I guess it didn't like all the white. Anyway, you get the idea. So again, 50 steps, it's crazy, but it steps us through it very smoothly and very procedurally and honestly, very easily, all right? It's really, I know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm beating you all over, over the head with this, but this alone is going to scare some people. This is definitely going to scare some people. And I mean, seriously, but it's not that hard. Okay, I am done trying to sell y'all that this game really isn't that bad. I'm done with it, that's it. There are other things that are not uh, pictured. I do have various chits in various cups that we're going to be proceeding through for setup. Those, I do not have in baggies, I have those set up already. Also, I have the decks of cards set up. We're going to make the decks are, together. Again, we're gonna walk through the entire setup because my, my job, I feel like today, is to help y'all make your job easier to see what all goes into it, but also, oh, okay, I, yeah, this is a good way to organize it, or maybe you have better ideas. I'm fine with that. But anyway, the decks of cards. So we have all the events. We have the cascading events. We have the terrorist events, boo, hiss. We have natural disasters, Ugh. And then we have, yay! We have uh, exceptional White House resources. So uh, we get one of these to start. That's awesome. There are also a handful of other chits that I do have separated already, not in baggies. Um, these, honestly, I could have in individual baggies, um, but I just have them already set up uh, for when we actually begin play tomorrow. Lastly, I have my little Greyhound Casino and Tavern uh, poker chip. Um, this, this I, I get poker chips. Whenever I go to new casinos, I get a $1 poker chip for uh, every casino I, I play poker in around the world as I go. Anyway, uh, one of the clo uh, local casinos used to be known as the Greyhound Casino and Tavern. And this is the, uh, the presidential dog is a Greyhound, as you all know. So Lincoln is going to be helping us out during our stream here uh, for whenever we have certain areas where we're going to be activating this is i'm going to actually use this doesn't come with the game by the way uh to signify hey we're doing stuff here in south america to help you all follow along obviously the cameras will be zoomed in on the various areas but i'm also going to use this that and again you could use i don't know say a challenge coin but i digress all right so with all that said i have gone over and over probably about a hundred times how I want to do this as far as setup and overview. And I think I'm going to kind of break up the overview in two parts. I'm going to do a, a brief overview of what it is you're looking at and how the flow of the game works. And then I will do a little bit more of an in-depth one after we set it all up. I think breaking it up that way makes the most sense. Plus, like I said, I like to talk. So here we are. All right. Uh, English breakfast. All right. So what is it we're looking at? We're going to go ahead together and we're going to take a tour of the board together. Normally, I don't like y'all seeing the PTZ moving around and all that stuff. So if you are prone to motion sickness, um, I apologize ahead of time. This way, I'm not switching the camera a million times in short succession. But this is the most important part of the game. Obviously, the turn sequence. I've already covered this. Start the marker here, work our way down, and do whatever it says following the flip book. And then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and start up top. So actually, you know what? I lied. We are going to, I, I am going to bounce around. This way you guys don't have to watch the camera move, but also to kind of give context where out here we're talking about. So we're talking about up here. All right, this part up there. And for those that find it comical, serious game like this, we will use our little pointer here. All right, so this is the presidential uh, cabinet. All right, so these are going to be our attributes. 
that we, these represent us, okay? So we're going to randomly draw what those are. Then we are going to randomly draw our vice president. And then we are going to kind of randomly draw, but have some choice in our chief of staff, in our secretary of state, and our secretary of defense. Hopefully we draw well, that would be great. Uh, these will provide us extra benefits and actions throughout the game. But these, provided nothing negative happens uh, for within scandals and such, these will be the people that are assisting us throughout, this will be our main cabinet throughout the entire game. Then up here, we have the uh, the public legislation uh, priorities. Hey, this is what the public thinks are the five biggest priorities that we need to do. Okay, these are our top three priorities that we decide, cool. And then we will randomly draw a campaign promise. While we were out campaigning, we said, hey, we're going to do X and we, we need to do that or people are going to be really pissed off at us. Kind of makes sense. All right, next, moving on from there, we looking right here, we have the cabinet focus. So these are going to be our priorities and these are going to have to do with various steps that we take through um, that are going to give us benefits provided we roll well. Oh, did I mention this game has, has only has two dice? Yeah, two dice, a six sided and a 10 sided and you, you need to roll low consistently. It's not gonna happen, but it's gonna have, you know, gonna need to. All right, and then uh, moving on down from there, I just realized I don't have one for that, do I? Oh yeah, I do. Uh, the cabinet effectiveness, the higher this is, the better that is for us, our party relations. The higher this is, the better it is for us because we get friends in Congress. All right, so moral of the story is, this here is our cabinet stuff. This is, our attributes, our cabinet, and how well we hopefully can manage these things. Then moving over down into this corner is how we are able to win the game. How we are able to win the game, a lot is going to be determined in here as well as just above here. So these are various tracks. Hey, what is the world's opinion of us? How, are, how well are we getting, we, meaning the president and the cabinet, getting along with Congress? How well are we getting along with the media? And hey, how's our homeland security? Kind of a big deal. And finally, the state of the economy as well. All right? So that is kind of a, hey, where do we stand type thing. And then the other main place where we can win the game is here in Congress. In Congress, hey, the more bipartisan cooperation we have, the easier it is to be able to pass bills. So we're going to be passing bills through Congress, through the legislature, hopefully, and this is where this is going to help us score legacy points, which is ultimately the goal of the game, all right? Then um, our congressional friends and our congressional enemies or opponents here. And hey, who controls Congress? Does my side of the aisle or the other side of the aisle? This is where I take a moment and tell you, I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, liberal or, or conservative. This game does a very good job of straddling. You can be either, you can be neither. It's not, it doesn't push one way or the other and it does a very good job of that. And I'm really grateful for that. So. You can govern however you see fit. Military and Homeland Security and the NSA and all that stuff is a big deal to you, do that. Immigration reform, welfare reform, you know, the third rail, social security, do that. Focus on what you wanna focus and it doesn't push you in that direction. So I think that's kind of awesome. All right, so that is taking care of Congress, state of the country, cabinet stuff, turn stuff. All right, everything else has to do with the rest of the world, okay? So over here, we have the strategic capabilities. There are three superpowers in the world, realistically, and three in the game represented. There's the United States, there's Russia, and there's China. These various tracks will track 
how well those three countries are in these various strategic capabilities. We will hopefully be increasing ours and not so much China and Russia's and staying ahead of them. We struggled with this in our previous plays, but I digress, okay? Then down below that, military assets that we can uh, be able to spend, uh, place out here into the world from here out here into the world. Then up above all of that is kind of a uh, housekeeping stuff, which are the various decks. So the, the, the crisis deck, sounds scary, um, usually negative. Uh, when we have to draw cards, we're predominantly going to be drawing cards from this area. Then uh, placing some into the reshuffle pile and others discard out of the game, which will end up out of camera, so don't worry about that. The two deck, whenever we get um, recurring uh, cascading events, they will come here. And then when it says to draw one from here, uh, things only get worse, possibly get better if they're good, possibly, rarely. But usually the more cascading events hang around, the worse they're going to be. So there. And then finally, uh, cascading events get really worse. Uh, year two deck, year three deck, year four deck, pretty straightforward. And finally, there are two other tracks up here. These two tracks have to do with uh, Iran and the Democratic people of Korea. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Is it the D uh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, AKA North Korea. These are their nuke tracks. We don't want those going big. Then we have the conflict tracks. There are two of them. There, well, okay, there's 10 of them, but you get the idea. There are various conflict tracks, India v. China, India v. Pakistan. We'll have counters out here. And then there will be others down here. Um, so those 10 there. So that is the sideboard over here, there. And then finally, we have the rest of the world. I'm not gonna cover this in detail, which I realize I'm kind of getting into the weeds a little bit, so I will stop with that. Uh, let's see. What's our goal for the game? Our goal for the game is right here, this track, legacy points. We're gonna have uh, some number of legacy points by the end of the four years, provided we don't get impeached and we make it to four years. Uh, and we're going to be judged against historical presidents. Higher is better. Okay, cool, all right. Down below, uh, that is the public approval. We're gonna start at 40. It can go up to 70 plus. It could go way down to 18. Thankfully, I've never gone below 30. I have made it to 70, that's cool. And then APs or action points. We're gonna have action points that we're going to be able to spend for various things, whether it re-rolls or uh, benefits, DRMs. You're gonna hear that term a whole lot throughout this game, DRMs. Those are dice roll modifiers. DRMs, when they're negative, are good for us. When they're positive, they're bad for us. I realize that's unintuitive, but low rolls are good. Remember that. Universally, low rolls are good. The rest of this are different areas, hot spots in the world. All right, so we have CONUS. That's obviously us in Canada for the most part. Then we have the Eurozone, Eastern Europe. We have Central America, the Middle East, Central South Asia. We have South America, Africa, Asia and Pacific. And then finally, the last ones that we have over here are the big two, which are China and Russia. And those, as you know, as you saw, have their own books. We'll cover all that as we're setting it up and as we go through. All right, so that's everything that you're looking at outside of, you know, the chits that I talked about and everything else. So what is it you're trying to do in this game? Survive, first off. Uh, govern well, all right? Uh, scoring legacy points. Scoring legacy points a lot through passing uh, monumental or uh, landmark bills and through the legislature over here, as well as uh, doing well with that as well as uh, having the economy do well and, 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 and mostly that. That's how you're going to win the game. How you lose the game is let the world catch on fire and do nothing about it, okay? So the game takes place through 50 steps, four turns, each turn represents a year. So as we go through this, bad things are going to happen and we're going to have to react to them. It's that simple. Okay. Some of these 
are automated in a sense that we're going to roll a die and something's going to happen. That is predominantly what's going to happen over here. Not a lot of decisions are going to happen when the game, it, things are happening that are out of our control. However, as you go through, anywhere you see these blue things, any actions, domestic actions here, actions, 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 those are where we're going to be able to take actions either for world stuff, put out fires, or help us at home here. That's, that's pretty much it. So take actions, helping ourselves and trying to improve our legacy and win the game while also making sure the world doesn't burn down. That's really it. The game does an excellent job. This is stressful. This is such a huge amount of stress throughout this game. The game does an excellent job of making you focus over here at times and then saying, okay, look, we put enough stress on you. Now we're gonna come over here and now you're gonna deal with home stuff and you can't do anything over here. So, you know what? Back burner, take a breath, and it does a really good job of being a, a pressure relief valve of just, hey, just focus at home, don't worry about that. Now, there are times to where you have to choose. What are my priorities? I can do both. I could do just this, I could do just that. But that's, that's where being the president comes in, and that's where the fun in this game comes in. All right? So, follow this take actions, react to things, improve things at home. That's, that's the game in a nutshell, all right? All right, so with that said, hopefully I have, um, I guess, blustered about the game and trying to give you all an overview on how this works. But I'll go through it a little bit more in detail after we're done setting up, but I've now, talked about everything to where as I'm placing out chits and setting the game up, it'll have a little bit more context for y'all, okay? All right, so with that said, now I apologize, I don't really have this set up in a way that I can walk y'all through this and this is a lot of white, so I'm gonna have this off camera, but I'm gonna, we're gonna step through all 12 pages together. That's why I said this is going to be a while. Okay, so uh, hopefully y'all have some coffee, some tea, and, uh, and let's do this. All right, welcome to the White House. Congratulations, you won the election. election. It's day one on the job, and you're sitting behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office. Mr. President has seven scenarios. The core scenario, which is what we're going to be playing, is a sandbox in which you create your own presidency and see how well you do. That is really the main game. Let's be clear, that is the whole kit and caboodle. The other six scenarios are all based on historical presidencies in the 20 year period from 2000 to 2020. How well will you do when faced with the world situation and domestic challenges of the American presidents during his t this time? All right? Uh, now, it does have a note here that says the last historical scenario, 2020, is only one game turn so it's only one year, you only go through this once. And it's designed as a short introductory game to get your toes in the water of Mr. President. Personally, I don't like that idea, and here's why. I would much rather set up the base game for the core scenario and then just play one turn. And the reason I say that is the game in 2020 is set up in a non-standard way. Chits are not where they're normally going to be in the core setup. And I think that gives you a bit of a artificial feel. And I don't, I just didn't like that. So I would recommend personally, choose your own option to set it up as the core sandbox, ga sandbox game. And then if you just want to do one year, just do one year. Call that the introductory game and judge it accordingly. Now, obviously your legacy points are going to be skewed in the whole nine yards, but it, I feel like that gives you a very true feel for what the game is going to be. But I'm sure Mike spent a lot of time developing the 2020 scenario, so I will, uh, I will defer to Mike, but that's just my personal opinion, okay? All right, all scenarios. So you know what? I will show you all this part of it. 
So the all scenarios, all seven scenarios require the following four steps. So there will be four numbers right here, all right? If you have been reelected and are playing a second term, AKA an eight turn game, and God bless you if you are, okay? See special setup rules on page 12. We're not gonna worry about that. I digress. So we're gonna run through all four. And I wanna stress, regardless of the scenario that you set up, you follow these four steps, okay? Again, read every sentence, it's important. Okay, all right, good. Now, the other thing that I will point out is throughout the board, you're gonna see little blue Sharpie marks. Please don't freak out. Yes, I did that to my game. And the reason I did this is these are the starting spots for all scenarios on these things. So I did that. So whether that is here in the regional crisis levels, these uh, where the legacy points, uh, I'm sorry, where the, uh, where the prestige is, things like that to make it easier for me on my copy to know where certain shits go without referencing, you know, and spending a lot of time during this setup. So that's what those little dots are because for whatever reason, GMT chose not to put a starting, like, I don't know, a gold mark around it to signify these are universal. I digress. I chose to do that. Okay. So we start off with random, number one, random counter and crisis chit draws. You'll need seven opaque cups. Okay, look, I don't have, well, okay, I do, but these are kind of a pain in the butt to draw out of, and then these are easier, and you just put your hand around it like this, and you can't see the side, and so here, it's opaque. So there we go, we have our seven cups. All right, you'll need seven opaque cups for the random counter in crisis chit draws. Find each of the following types of counters and the crisis chits, and place them in one of the, oh, hold on, oh my. There is one other thing I really wanna to stress to y'all, and I apologize for not doing this earlier. If you have a new copy of the game, do not punch the game until you are ready to set it up. Punching the game while setting it up is imperative. It's, look, is it impossible to do otherwise? No. But doing it while you set it up will familiarize yourself with the chits, some of which that are called out are on the backside of the chit boards, but I have found it immensely helpful to do that the very first time. Honestly, I was going to reach out to GMT and have them send me a new set of chit boards so I could punch these, but I thought that would take too long, so I decided against it. When you get your copy and you're going to set up the game, don't just punch it like you do a normal Euro. Punch it as you set up. Very important, very, or very helpful at least, okay? All right, okay, done, all right. Too late for that, sorry. Okay, anyway, the POTUS attribute counters. Let me find which one I put those in. Oh, for the love of all the, oh, yeah, right here. The POTUS attribute counters, and you know what? I am going to use that as, there you go. So these are mostly good if they are blue and uh, bad uh, attributes if they are red. So all of those, oops, without throwing them away, all of those will go into one of the opaque cups. Okay, done. So that is there. The next one are the key cabinet ones, the key cabinet members. The key cabinet members, okay, a little hard to see because again, there, those are the blue ones that go into one cup, all of them. Um, I would also recommend, uh, I use a ton of baggies for this game that you will see. And I would recommend that all seven of these cups individually get their own baggie. And then within that, once you have each of these seven cups individually bagged, all seven of those baggies go inside another baggie and those are your draw cups. That's how I have it set up. Okay, I digress. The next are the public legislative priority chits. The, nope, wrong ones, those. The public priority, or public, there you go, priority. So remember all those things, social security and uh, infrastructure upgrades and job creation package, uh, all of those. These are the things that up top, 
that the public legislation uh, priorities, this is what they care about. That's where those are going to go. The presidential attributes are going to go there. The cabinet's uh, members are going to go there. So that is their own cup there. The next one are the administrative legislative priorities. Those are these as well as your campaign promise. All right, oh, wrong one. There we go. So these look a lot like the public ones. So the public ones here, they mimic those. They are, they are the exact same. Okay, just these say administration priority and those are the public. It probably behooves you to make these, those, whatever these are, match those. It helps you, okay? So make sure I put them back in the right cups. There and there. So the is how many? That is four of the cups down. And then we have congressional friends and congressional opponents. Friends, white, white hat, black hat, good guys, bad guys. Help you, impede you. Pretty, pretty straightforward on that. So one cup, one cup, all right? And then the single most, excuse me, this uh, hiccups, oh boy. The single most important cup in the game. And I will probably put some tape around this one or something so y'all, uh, to make it more dramatic. These are the crisis chits. These are what make your life miserable in the best way possible, okay? These are one of the driving forces in the game. All of those, and uh, red ones, cascading events, predominantly really bad. And you'll notice, I saw it in here hiding. I've never drawn it. Where is it? Come on. Come on. Okay. Yeah, oh, there it is. See that? See that good times? I have never drawn that chit. That is the only positive chit in the entire cup. I haven't drawn it. I, th I think Mike put it in there just to tease you. You're just never going to draw it. Anyway, that is the seventh and arguably most important cup in the game. All right. So we have done step one. Step one says... Random counter and crisis chit draws. So punch those things and put them into those cups like so, okay? Now we are going to move on to step two, which is all of this, all of that there and getting ready for, to make our deck or our, the, the, the cards, but the deck is actually last, but I digress. Oh, I like that. Mike says, I refer to it as the cup of death. Yes, yes, I like that. All right. Oh, wow, Rocky drew it once. Says I did, I think I visited a school. You, you think, you don't remember? You drew it and that didn't like imprint on you? That's, that's insane, that, that, I promise you. If and when it does. Oh, we're gonna dance around the table, we're gonna, yeah. Anyway, all right, step two. Place general game counters. Okay, so now, and this is going to reflect because of the cameras, I apologize. Here is what I have done and how I've chosen to set this up. I do not have any GMT counter trays or the ones I have are in other games and I didn't want to break, you know, change those out. Plus, I have a ton of baggies here. I, I realize not everybody does. But personally, I think this is the best way to do this, okay, to store this game. Okay, that's a lot of reflecting, I apologize. This says main board. You know it says main board because it says main board, I wrote that on it. Um, and then each one of these is individually bagged. So I have a CONUS bag, I have a Central America bag, I, et cetera, et cetera, okay? If it has to do with the main board, the main board also includes that stuff, okay? The miscellaneous board and I, I realized that after I don't play this for a little while, I might think it's this, so I put the tension, et cetera, here, all right? And what that means is that all these chits are individually bagged. Each one of these things has a bag, and those go inside there. We'll talk about that later. And then I have the sideboard, the strategic capabilities, the conflict tracks, et cetera, all bagged up individually as well as in a bag. So I cannot stress that I think this is the best way to store this thing 
unless maybe you want to use the GMT counter trays, you're on your own in that case. Okay. All right. So that is what I found useful. So the reason I'm pointing that out is now we have to break these out. Okay. So main board. Now, as I empty these, those bags are going to go back into the main bag board, uh, main board bag, easy for me to say, just to keep things organized. And then I don't need it until, you know, next weekend when I, when I break this down. Um, so yeah, highly, highly recommend it. Okay, fine. Mike says, or a 3D printer. Fine. Sure. I don't have one of those. Okay. All right. There we go. So I'm going to set this aside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lay these out into main board needs setup. So that, that's kind of this area. So that's good. So I'm going to put these out and then as we get to them, we will go ahead and bust them out. Central South Asia, we have Africa, we got the Eurozone, Eastern Europe. And obviously I have the bags listed because I mean, yeah, South America. We have China, we have Russia. Now there are certain things that we're going to need to do random draws on. I have not included those chits. However, um, like for instance, the Middle East plus two random US footprints. Okay, but when I get to that part of the setup, it'll remind me, but I have not included those in there, okay? So that is for all of the, what is it? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 areas over there. And then we have the main board set up there. Now, what I'm also going to do um, is I'm going to go ahead and do the sideboard stuff as well. And again, as I empty those, those will go back into this bag. It's just really, really recommended, okay? Um, all right, so we have sideboard, conflict tracks, done. And in case I forget to put these back into the right baggie, I wrote sideboard on all of these. Hey, the bills, that goes to that area, okay? Then we have sideboard, strategic capabilities and nuke tracks. That's gonna be up there. Then we have sideboard, Congress and basic setup tracks. That's gonna be down there. And we have sideboard, US military assets. That's gonna go right there. Okay. And good. I think we are, I haven't done the miscellaneous board intention stuff. We're gonna get there here in a couple minutes. Okay. All right. So hopefully, I hope I'm not overdoing this for y'all. I'm, I'm, I just really, the setup is, this is the most involved setup. I, I, I've never played any Monster War games, but this is the, the, the most involved setup I've ever encountered in my life. And this is the best way I've found to do this. So I hope y'all find this helpful and useful. All right. So, uh, place general game counters. So we're going to go ahead and obviously it spells these out, but I'm going to go ahead and spill these out off board. I'm going to put them down here, spread them out a little bit. And again, the first time you do this, punch them and put them out. That way it familiarizes yourself with what they are. Okay. Cannot stress that enough. So again, into the main board faggy. All right. So, uh, place the legacy point counters in the zero space on the legacy point track. All right, prestige, current turn, APs, APs, legacy points. There are two legacy points, and I'm, I, you know what? Yeah, I am going to do this this way. Uh, why do you hate me? Where is it? Yeah, I'm going to actually sort these a little bit. So it makes sense for when we actually place these out. Okay. There, there, ah, the, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to use the turn sequence as my kind of like working area right here. You know what? Let me think. Give me a second. I'm going to use that area. That'll work. There, that's better. So it's easier for you all to see and focus. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's set up in a in a logical 
way. All right, so it starts off. It says find the legacy point markers. So there's a 10 point marker and a one point marker. We're gonna go ahead and put the one point on top of the 10 point and we put it on the zero space right there, okay? So right there, had to find it, there we go, all right? Cool, so there we go. Legacy point markers, done. Next, place the current turn counter. Uh, let's see, can you all, yeah, I mean, I don't think, yeah, it's actually right there. So that's not bad, well, there we go. The current turn, in case you forget, in the epicness that is the turn sequence, the current turn, put it on year one. Okay. Oh, by the way, I couldn't find my counter clipper, so apologies. I haven't clipped them. Don't judge. All right. Next, place the current U.S. action counter. Okay. The current U. Uh, this this beautiful blue chet, which drives all of the entire game. I put it right at the beginning, right there, ready to rock and roll. Okay. Good. Next. We need to grab the four yellow, limish, green ally and row groups. There is an A, B, C, and D. We're going to flip them over to the back sides, and we are going to shuffle these. Yep, I want to make sure I don't read those. Okay. I'm going to shuffle them here and try and, okay. You, can, you know how you can feel the fronts and backs of chits. So I'm going to put these out in a random order. So hold on, that is the backside. And you're gonna put them face down. Oh, look at that, they all ended up face down, good. Like that, we will draw them as, we're gonna draw one here, we're gonna draw one there, we're gonna draw one there, we're gonna draw one there, and then they will, they will carry on. But as it is, we don't need to worry about that right now, other than they're shuffled up and there are, they're on their backside. Good. Next, place the 16 bills and the six greater society legislation counters on their advance one side in the unused bills box. Unused bills. So we're going to be coming over here for Congress. Uh, let me find it, there we go. So, hey, we got our bills bag right there okay Bob says don't judge too late all right fine now again I emptied this so this is going to go back into the sideboard bag and again I realize I'm being a bit pedantic about this but I promise you you're gonna want to do this as well so uh, here we go so down here where it says unused bills and I'll go ahead and bring that down a little there we go this area is where we're gonna place them. So these just, it's not super, super neat. We're just gonna make sure that it's in roughly the right spot. And then there are, I think, 15 bills. And the order of those does not matter at all. We're just gonna make it to where we can read them. on the advanced one side, and we want to think positive, so instead of them being on the opponent side, as you can see, so like energy independence, the opponents uh, propose it or we propose it. So we're gonna think positive. We're gonna go ahead and make sure all of these are on our side. Inevitably, the opponents will be proposing bills and we will have to fight them to the death. Okay, that is set up. Boom, done, excellent. So next is place the Russia Axe and China Axe crisis chits. So these two chits here uh, in the Russia and China extra action section of the game just under the turn sequence. So we have these two, so uh, Russia Axe 2 and China acts too. Now, what those are not, let me find it. Um, what those are not are these, okay? The China acted and Russia acted when they actually do so. So when we get there, 
here, or here. One will act based on the car, uh, die roll, the opposite one will act there. So eventually, it'll look something like this, or possibly, obviously, like that, depending on who acts in what order. But when you do so, those, will, those are just markers to show who acted as a reminder. We're talking about these chits down here in the corner, or in the, in the, in the bottom. So these, honestly, these will just kind of hang out by the board until we need them. But as it is, we have those set up and we're ready to rock for that. So that is one step done, which was this and this and fix that. All right, so now that we have covered that, we have made it all the way through that page. So we made it down to there, awesome. Now we're gonna talk about the cards. We are not going to set up the deck right now, but we are talking about the cards. Um, No, Mike, we set that up on page four and five. Haven't gotten there yet, that's all. Okay. I'm just running through the, the order in which you do this. Easy. Just doing it through the way you set it up. All right. Uh, now, the cards. Basically what it does is it tells you to separate the cards into decks. All the event cards, as I covered earlier, the cascading event cards, etc separate those into their own individual decks. I've done that, that's step three. Step four now is this bad boy. So I am going to do this very, very gingerly. And in fact, to make my life easier, I'm going to put a piece of plexiglass under it in case anything spills. All right, so the miscellaneous board, all of those into that. Okay, here we go. So now it tells you to set all of these up. Now I could go through it in the order, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to show you what they look like and then they're going to go onto this board. Okay, and then I will move said board. So um, terror groups, there are two groups. There are ones and twos and there are threes and fours. So both will go in there, you can stack them up, et cetera, okay? So there's the ones and twos, and the threes and fours right next door. So one side has ones and twos, obviously one has threes and fours, and I will show you all what those look like because this is going to be helpful. So ones and twos, threes and fours, they get darker, the stronger they get, um, lighter is better for us. So, all right, done. So those are on their board. All right, the next one is going to be the rogue states. There are level one, level two, level three, and level four rogue states. Hopefully you don't need too many of these. There are a total of five level ones and twos, and two, threes, and fours. They get greener, or darker, I guess, as well. All right, so easy enough there. These are gonna fall over and end up in piles like this throughout the play anyway, so I don't mind them being a little bit messy on that, plus they're not gonna be on camera, so it doesn't bother my, my um, CDO-ness. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, there are two different types of Civil War chits. There are Civil War and then there are C Civil War ceasefire. These do need to be separated and I will show you why here in a moment. Okay, so the Civil Wars just say Civil War on them with a line underneath them. On the back side, they say unstable state, okay? So those will go into the Civil War area. And then there are Civil War just ceasefires, and those are double-sided that say ceasefire on both sides. So that unstable state, that's the key part here. Um, you wanna try and keep these separated. I mean, if they mixed, I mean, just, I mean, you get the idea. 
not a huge deal, but whatever. There. These I will stack up, at least theoretically. Okay, done. The next ones are the Goodwill and the US military footprint. All right, so the Goodwill are green. They are those. And the military footprint, which you would think are positive. They're not, they're bad, bad shits, okay. All right, the military footprint. These, footprint, the gist of these are whenever we have military uh, forces in uh, other countries, they tend to leave a footprint and those footprints tend to be negative, like, like they don't want us there, which fair, okay? Um, and so they range on the backside from no effect, okay, hey, it didn't hurt us, to Plus one to regional crisis, probably not good. Um, plus one to the highest level terror, because we pissed them off so bad. Uh, that's not great. Uh, place a trending anti-U.S. So, so these, these no bueno, these are not good. So in a perfect world, we would uh, take actions that are allow us to remove the U.S. military footprint on these. Now, these you'll notice I am turning over because it's going to be a random draw. Now, I do not, I have the memory of a goldfish, so therefore, having these stacked up, I could not tell you what is where. Plus, let's face it, I don't want to ruin my gaming experience by knowing what these are. So these, I'm going to try like hell to try and keep stacked up. Probably will fail, but I'm going to try. Okay. So that's the U.S. military footprint. The other thing is U.N. goodwill counters. As you might could imagine, these are actually good things. So these goodwill counters are going to be plus ones or twos. Um, bigger numbers are better. Now, I know I said low numbers are, 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 are better in this game as a general rule. However, these are modifiers. So these are going to only help us lower so technically they're all negative numbers so in a good way so these we're going to be able to acquire as the game goes on and they will go into the un goodwill earned area saving you all some work trying to figure out where these go they don't when you take actions in these various pla various places when you earn goodwill it doesn't matter where you earned it it's going to go over here into the corner but you have to earn it first so yeah, I'll fix it in a minute. Here we go. By the way, overdoing it or just right? Like, y'all, is this good? So I, I missed the answers earlier. I will look for them now. So, all right. So these are, let's see, UN Goodwill counters. Those are all stacked face down there. Okay? All right. Next, we have unilateral and multilateral sanction counters. Uh, these are unilateral, meaning just the U.S. is sanctioning uh, somebody for acting a fool around the country, or at least in our opinions. And by our, I mean mine, because, again, it all falls on my shoulders. These, the unilateral, just have a giant U.S. flag on it, so that's just us. Okay, and again, so no effect or minus ones, okay? Those unilateral will go onto the unilateral space. Oops, get up, there we go. And the multilateral there, uh, very similar, <laughs> except these have, you know, Ally, us and allies, and, you know, minus numbers, no effects. There you go. So there's one no effect, one minus two, and the rest are minus one. I'll be honest, I didn't know what the distribution of these were, so this is kind of nice to, to know this stuff. And now that I know the no effects on top, because I did see that, I'm actually just going to shuffle those. Okay, now I don't know, because, again, I don't want to ruin my experience with this. All right. So multilateral will go there, and I just 
There we go. At least the top one is facing the right way. Don't, don't judge. Okay. Just come on. I know I'm not the only one that does this. All right, done. Next, we have the tension counters. Now, you'll notice the tension box, pretty big. Uh, the reason for that, there's a lot of them. Um, these are not good. None of them are good. They are all, to, to the best of my knowledge, they're, oh, there are some no effects. See those? Um, so yeah, I think what I'm going to do actually is these are going to go into a cup because these obviously take up a huge amount of room. So if you all give me just one second, I thought I had, you know what? Yeah, we'll use this one. So that. And I'll actually transfer them into a bigger cup. They're just over there. Ah, hell, I'll do it. Let's see if I can stretch. Oh, there we go. There we go. And again, opaque cup, theoretically, it's just going to be on the honor system. I don't want to ruin it. So those technically will be there. That's it. Uh, who said that? Um, uh, cool Blue says, honestly, I just put all my tension chits in a small bag. That also would work. I don't know if I have any baggies that aren't see-through, but I think that would work perfect. And then finally, we have... UN peacekeepers, and we have UN uh, sanctions. So, peacekeepers, I've yet to actually have these come out, but uh, we put them on the, on the board, on our little board there. And these are ones and twos, like these aren't random draws. You either put out a one or a two, I assume. Again, I have not had reason to do so yet, or had cause. Probably have had cause, but I just haven't done that yet. So there's that, and then obviously UN sanctions look a lot like our sanctions, except they have UN flags, okay? All right, so, and again, two no effects, because it's the UN, <coughs> uh, and then uh, minus ones, okay? So here, and try not to look at what those are. Scramble them up, looking away, okay, cool. All right, and done. So this board is now set up, okay? Y'all will not see that board again. So everything that is on there, and in fact, all those baggies are back in here and that will go into the box until next week when we are done. Watch, because the box over there. All right, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to risk it. Everybody take a deep breath. The, the impressive thing was when Jess helped me move this from up here to downstairs to the other table. Oh yeah, it didn't spill a one. They're still standing. Woo! So now that can go away. All right. All right, so that is the holding sideboard. That is set up and that will live over here and will not move. I will just be grabbing chits from here as we need um, and figuring out a bag for that, but as it is, cool. All right, okay. All right. Yeah, um, so, so one other thing that uh, Cool Blue's talking about is obviously that board that I just showed you that we set up all those chits on, I could have scooted this whole thing out, zoomed out, and had the war board and the, the tension chits or vice versa over here. But honestly, it... it they're the equivalent of another panel of these, but it's just unnecessary. And I wanted to have it, I wanted to have it uh, zoomed in for y'all. So having those off camera kind of made sense. Okay. So sideboard set up. Now I would like to point out that this said, 
All seven scenarios do four steps. Step one, done. Step two, done. Step three, just having the decks separated. And step four is the sideboard. That right there is what all scenarios have. That's it. So now, now finally, we are getting into the core scenario, the sandbox, which is our scenario, okay? Now, you'll notice that there are three different difficulty levels. There's easier difficulty, there is normal difficulty, and there is harder difficulty. I have juggled with this, but I think I've yet to play a full game. I played a full year a couple times, but I think even though we actually, in our last full year, we actually came place to winning it at the end of year one, by the way, but I think we're going to go ahead and go with the easier difficulty. However, we are not playing the special optional DRM rule, and which is just a minus one DRM to all player die rolls in the game. Just, you get a minus one. It makes it, no, that, that I feel like is a step too far and would make it way too easy. Whereas all these other changes really aren't, don't make it that much easier, in my opinion. Okay? All right? Cool? Cool. All right. Mike is saying play normal. All right, you know what? Screw it. Here's the time we can talk about this. Look, I know y'all love watching me struggle, and I appreciate that. But, Mike, if you're going to call for me to play normal, you got to be here the whole time. That, that's how that works. I'm just saying. So what do y'all think? Do we play the normal difficulty or easier? Hard's just not even an option. I mean, the key here is I don't want to lose the game prematurely and mess up the schedule. So the easier seemed like a good idea. But I can be convinced. Chime in. Uh, Mike says I'll do my best to be here the whole time. All right, let me look at what normal does. I haven't even looked at it, I'll be honest. So normal says, you only get two positive presidential attributes. Easy, you get three. The, oh my God, the APs, you get 15 instead of 20 every year. Oh. Uh... Cabinet effectiveness starts at four instead of five. I love you, Mike, but no. I, I'm going to go easy, and here's why. I have a schedule for seven days, and the, the lack of APs and the split part, no. The game is punishing as it is. Yeah, I think I think I want to show how hard it can be on easy because I don't want people to be just discouraged by that and I think that would go bad. Yeah, I think I'm going to do easy without the DRM. Final decision. I feel good about that. I will say this. If we do get the second edition from GMT, I will restream it on normal. How's that? I think that's a reasonable uh, moderation of it. Hard is just comical, okay? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go easy, but without the DRM rule. That's how I've been playing it, and it feels like it goes well. So don't judge harshly, or if you do, so be it. All right. Now, it is called out the different difficulties right here. So the easier difficulty, here you go. So I get three positives instead of two. I get 20 APs instead of 15. And what I'm doing is comparing it to the normal. Cabinet effectiveness starts at five as opposed to four. Our party starts with uh, uh, control of Congress. Um, all right. 
Legislative friends and opponents, we draw uh, on their moderate side instead of radical if there are possibilities. Terror groups, this is one that is easy to miss, and I'm going to point this out a couple times as we set this up. It reminds you here, and it reminds you in two other places, which is good because it's really, really easy to forget this. One of the level one terror groups from every uh, world region gets removed. Well, I'm going to place it and then we'll remove it, but we'll talk about it then. No wars in progress at the start of the game, and both Russia and China start at posture one instead of posture two. And then finally, we are not playing with the additional DRM, okay? Uh, so there we go. And I appreciate that, Mike, thank you. All right, so with that said, here we go. So, uh, starting with POTUS. Determine your initial presidential attributes. For an easier game, place all 12 and here. So here they are, okay? Uh, again, it says opaque cup, but I'm just gonna shuffle and blindly draw. If I draw any of the reds, I'll redraw because we don't get any of the negatives. So here we go. Here, not looking. I'm gonna draw one at a time for dramatic effect. We have likable. Plus three uh, public um, approval every turn. That doesn't suck. Excellent. Okay, cool. All right, next is media savvy. I mean, seems appropriate, right? Uh, plus one to media relations per turn. Not the one I would have chosen, believe it or not. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, and the final one is... Teflon. Huh. I haven't seen this one. Minus two DRM, so minus two dice roll modifier uh, for every presidential scandal roll. I hope I don't need those. I'll be honest. Those kind of suck, which is great. Um, they, they, there are way better ones. Um, plus four presidential APs per turn. That would have been helpful. You start with 20. So make it 24. That would have been great. Uh, relations with Congress. Plus one every turn. That would have been great. I've had those. Uh, yeah. So anyway, those, not great. I'll be honest. Not super, super pleased with those. Which, I would argue, kind of makes it a little bit harder. So there we go. Garbage pulls. Exactly. So there you go. That just made it harder. So. Those will live there in perpetuity for the remainder of the game. That is me. I am likable, I'm media savvy, and I'm Teflon. No scandals stick to me. Likable and media savvy, true to life. I mean, it does seem appropriate, doesn't it? So, all right. Yeah, yeah, um, by the way, real quick, um, if you have the first edition of this, go check out the upgrade kit. Uh, Mike, you can actually link it because you're a mod here now. Uh, you can link to it, so if you want, you can post the link to the P500. The pricing on it's really, really good. Definitely recommend because why not? It just upgrades all the books to the, you know, all the errata and all that stuff because there's going to be a lot of handwritten stuff in mine. All right, yeah, typical politician. Yeah, it seems appropriate. All right, so there are our presidential attributes. Okay, done. Now, there is an optional aspect down here at the bottom where you could just pick your two or three, but nah, what, what fun is that? Now, what I would argue is the single most important part of setup and the most stressful is the White House which is what we're about to do, okay? In this step, you determine the White House and cabinet resources you have to help you in your administration. Note, the game includes two counters for Andy Lewis, good Andy and bad Andy. Both go in the draw cup at game start. If you draw an Andy counter, that's the only one you use for the game. The, uh, if you draw good Andy, get rid of bad Andy. If you draw bad Andy, get rid of good Andy. Pretty simple, okay? All right. Now, it says draw your vice president, then you get to select your chief of staff, secretary of state, and secretary of defense, sort of. So, 
Let me, here we go. This cup, let's bring that back to here. This cup has all of them in it. What we want, I'll be honest, I don't care what the VP is. VP is the most useless position in American politics, but there you go. Thank you, Mike. The VP, we just randomly choose. So here we go. We'll shuffle them up. We will draw one. Obviously can't see. And that'll be that one. And let's be dramatic about this. Moving on up to the cabinet. The vice president is Kim Richards. Oh, that was wonderful, though. That was a great draw. So there is a upgraded side. So these three stats are domestic, diplomatic, and military. So these are DRMs, obviously negative numbers, which are, po which are good for us. So the upgraded side for Kim Richards. But the important thing is that thing that is right above the number. You see this? It says plus one action. Anytime the VP gets an action, the VP gets two actions. That's great. And domestic and diplomatic get a minus, DR, minus one DRM at the start of the game for various roles as need be. Okay, so yay. All right, welcome, welcome, uh, Miss Richards. So Kim, well done. All right, so moving on back now. Now, that was for the, uh, the VP, okay? Um, the Chief of Staff, you, we're going to draw three counters for the Chief of Staff. Those are the candidates that your team has vetted to be your Chief of Staff. Choose the person you want to be your Chief of Staff. Um, a diplomatic rating higher than zero is good. In other words, the middle number, we want to be an integer that is not zero, okay? And then we will do the exact same thing. We'll throw them back in with the ones not that we don't choose. We will throw them back in. Then the Secretary of State will draw three, throw whatever two we don't choose back in, and then do the same for the Secretary of Defense. Okay? Cool. All right. So we are going to draw three. And this, actually, we will bring on down here, and we will clear these out to give the cabinet an appropriate... Okay, we're drawing three. Let me see. One, two, I think that's three. Okay. Oh, don't want to look at that. Here we go. What do we have? We have Eric Massey, which has a uh, domestic rating of one, not going to be the chief of staff. That just in. Okay. Next, we have Ellen Price, okay? Also, probably not going to be our chief of staff. God, I hope I draw better than this. Okay, and the last one is Ayo! We got good Andy, woohoo! That is exactly who we want for our chief of staff. Well, that worked out nice. Good Andy gets plus one action and has one across the board. Good Andy has twos. So that means if we draw bad Andy, we'll just throw him out because can't get it. Woohoo! And I'll be honest, if I could choose any one shit for any one position, it would be Good Andy for Chief of Staff. That was a great draw. So, Good Andy, well, congratulations. Welcome on board, Good Andy. And these two go back into the cup and they could be Secretary of State or possibly Secretary of Defense. All right, so now Secretary of Defense, I'm sorry, Secretary of State, we would like a diplomatic rating of one or higher as well, okay? All right. And a military rating higher than zero, the last number for uh, Secretary of Defense, obviously, okay? So here we go. We're drawing three. One, two. Okay, hold on. I will hide those. I'm not looking because I want to be surprised too. And three. 
Okay, put those back into my hand. Okay, here we go. So, options for Secretary of State. We have Ellen Price, which we want a diplomatic rating for Secretary of State. That is the middle number. Probably not, Ellen. Next, we have Rick Campbell. Ah, uh, plus one action. However, the diplomatic rating is zero. That's tough. That would have been great for Secretary of Defense. Hey, Rocky, have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. And finally, the third one is... Hey! That worked out well. Allen Box, plus one action and a diplomatic rating of one. That is glorious. And his domestic rating gets better as the experience set, but you lose the action. Interesting. Whereas here for Rick, the backside, and Allen, Ellen, the backside, I think we got to go with, with Allen here as our Secretary of State. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Okay? All right. So, hey, McCrispy, welcome. All right, so Allen Box, welcome to the staff. Secretary of State. All right. So those two get back into there. I feel bad for Ellen. She's 0 for 2. Okay. <laughs> cool Blue says, in my head canon, uh, Good Andy is actually a pupper, and they're the goodest of doggos. I, I like that, right? Okay. We have three. Look at you pull. You'll pay for these good pulls soon. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Mike is almost rooting against our good pulls right now. All right, so we have Secretary of Defense, and we want the last number to be uh, a one or higher. So here we go. Let's see. We have first up. We have Henry Haynes. Not great because again, military. So unlikely, Harry Henry. I'm sorry. Next, we have Eric Massey. Oh, God, this is not going well. Okay, at least he has a plus one to action on the backside, but this is not who we want as our Secretary of Defense. And finally, we have Ayo Krista Hellenston. Uh, plus one action and ones across the board. I would argue she is, outside of Andy, the best pull we could have gotten. Right there on the experience side. So uh, Secretary of Defense, Krista pulls no punches. Look at that. How's that for a staff? What? All right. Welcome to the staff, Krista. All right. So there you have it. You have Edward Euler as President of the United States. You have Kim Richards as the Vice President of the United States. We have Andy Lewis, good Andy, as our uh, chief of staff. We have Alan Box as our uh, secretary of state and the esteemed Krista Hallenston, or Halston. I apologize, Krista. Krista Halston as our secretary of defense. Ayo! <laughs> and, and for those that are waiting for the scandals, I just want to point out, all of a sudden, if you're going to pull well, you might as well get Teflon, because that's going to pay off. Hey, that'll do, pig. That'll do. All right. We have our, our cabinet. Now, we set our cabinet effectiveness to four. For an easier game, it's for five. So if we take a look now... Oops. Uh-oh. There we go. Our cabinet effectiveness right here. Notice I did not put any marks on these just because of the fact that uh, 
the cabinet effectiveness will change depending on difficulty, so I didn't. So cabinet effectiveness will go there. And by the way, that's the backside. It looks the same as that. And that will start at five for the easier game. And there is also a cabinet effectiveness improving and a cabinet effectiveness worsening. You're gonna see a number of these chits that look like this that are going to have a uh, improving and worsening. These are effectively half steps. So to be able to move this up from five to six or from five to four respectively, you need to have this added twice. So if we, it says to add it, you add it, okay. And then if it says to add it again, instead of adding it, you actually take it off and you will move it up or down respectively. That's going to be a universal rule for a lot of these things that are going to be improving and worsening. But as it is, this is just going to set, sit off board for right now until we need it throughout the game. Okay? All right. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that we have, it is, it is 50% male, 50% female. So that is, that is excellent. I support this. And I like that. The staff is making up for subpar traits of the president. It's actually, it's not about the person in front. It's the people behind. And wow, that was great, right? So that worked out. All right, so we are done now with the POTUS stuff and the White House. Okay. Oh, oh, there is, there is a couple more things here, uh, right here for the White House stuff. We'll get there. On to page six, draw your exceptional White House resource. Among your many cabinet members, advisors, and teams in the West Wing, you have one with truly exceptional talent to determine which exceptional re resource you get. Shuffle the five, right there. Shuffle the five uh, cards, randomly select one. So peanut gallery, choose a number one to five, okay? And when we get three of the same number, that's the one we're going to pick. And it's actually going to go up there above the board and we'll reference it when it, when it comes into play, okay? Don't reapply or don't apply the benefits yet. Those will come at the start of each turn. Okay, we are done shuffling. So there are the five cards. Here we go. Looks like number three, so unsurprisingly, number three. So it, that is that card right there. We will set these aside for right now. And what do we have? We have, oh wait, let me put those back in the, uh, by the way, if all goes well, all of these will not be used again unless uh, there's a scandal and they need to be replaced. Um, I have yet to encounter that. So this cup, for all intents and purposes, if all goes well, is completely never used again and those can go back into a bag, right? Okay, for the seven cup bag. All right, so here we go. I have no idea who it is, let's see. We have, oh, this is, I love this one. I like this. Superstars on the NSC staff. Your National Security Council staff is filled with brilliant minds and experienced operators. Because of their skill and experience, you receive these benefits each turn and number one immediately if this card is drawn from the crisis deck during the game. Now, if we had drawn this, there will be one of these in the game, then we would be able to apply it right away. But we do not do so right now. Um, so instead, it says, during both uh, FNI, uh, the Focus National Intelligence segments of each turn, you can use this card to perform one free intel gathering or a uh, special forces raid with an added minus one DRM. Awesome. And once per game, you can just completely ignore, discard out of the game, one revealed terrorism event. So if it's bad enough, we can just get rid of it. There will be a number of those throughout the game. All right, so that is, we have a uh, National Security Council. So that is wonderful. I like this card. I've had this one before. So that will just live up there. That will come into play when it comes into play. Okay.
Ah, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Bob brings up a really good point here. He says, um, you might not ever use them, however, or you'll ask Ellen Box uh, to retire after he improves and has worse numbers. So that's a good point. Our Secretary of State, if, they, if he improves, gets worse. So uh, as, with experience, so maybe he just retires. So that may come into play. That's actually an excellent, excellent point. Okay. Okay. So uh, that is our exceptional right, White House. Now we're done with the White House. Now we set up step three here, the domestic situation. Okay. In this step, you determine the domestic situation you have inherited, setting the domestic track values. Okay, so let's get that. Okay. First up is we, uh, we set the pr uh, public approval uh, right here. The public approval chit looks like that. It's that on both sides. Uh, you'll see the public approval track right here. It goes from 18 to 70. It starts at 40. The general rule here is, you know, you want a hard-fought election that included a strong third-party candidate. Thus, much of the car country isn't fully loving the idea yet of having you as the president. I mean, that's fine. That's fair. I'm, I'm an acquired taste. Not everybody loves me. I get it. That's fine. Next, we set the prestige track to six. So if we actually take a look, I will get there. There we go. Ugh. We're going to need this here for a minute. Anyways, there we go. Uh, the prestige. Notice it has a little dot next to it that I put on there. Why? Because the prestige will always start there. Kind of makes sense, right? So prestige. We'll start at six. All right. Now, the, uh, you know what? A moment. Oh, actually, I don't bother doing that until we get there. Okay, yeah, never mind. Um, lost my spot. Here we go. Next, we are going to come over to the State of the U.S. track. State of the U.S. meaning these five tracks. So we need to bust out this baggie. There, that goes back into the sideboard baggie. There we go. <laughs> Mike says, maybe, maybe if you would have worn a tie, you could have started higher. To be clear, I wanted to look more <sighs> every man. <laughs> okay. So on these, you'll note that I did put dot, 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 dot. Guess what? Yep, you guessed it. That's where they all start. So Homeland Security will start at six. Media will start at five. The state of the economy will start at six. The bipartisan, uh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, the relations with Congress will start at five. And the world U.S., starts at five. Now you'll notice that there are a couple of others that I have not placed yet because even though they're in the same baggie, they actually have to do with stuff further up that way. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and keep those there until it tells me to go ahead and place these, but just we'll get there. Um, next, we're going to look over here at Con uh, CONUS. So this is the first time that we are looking at this part of the board. So these areas, specifically, we are looking here at CONUS, all right? Now, the way the rule, the setup, the scenario book has this broken up into two or three uh, different areas for CONUS, I don't like the way that's set up. I don't think this was laid out in the perfect way because it has you bouncing between different areas and I, I get that, like the domestic situation, we're doing this and then that. I just think it would have made more sense to set it up this way and then talk about it 
afterwards, but I digress. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't my choice. So we're gonna go ahead and set up uh, Conus over here, partially, because we're gonna reference this two or three different times. So we're gonna open up the chits for Conus with the caveat that we are not going to set all of these up right now, but we will here in a little bit. So that Conus will go back into the main board baggie, the baggie of baggies, there you go. All right, so the only things that we're going to set up right now is we're going to put the domestic crises, crisis I, crises, uh, to number one, and the lingering domestic issue on one as well. So lingering domestic issue, notice it has a dot on it. Well, it's a little hard to see, but take my word for it, it is there. And then finally, the domestic crises also has a dot, and there, it starts at one. Now, all of these things, I'm just gonna leave them cluttered because we're gonna come back and address that in the rule, in the order that the rule book has it, okay? All right, okay. So now, according to this scenario setup, we're done with the domestic situation. However, like our party relations hasn't been set up, the bipartisan cooperation hasn't been set up, so eh, I digress. Now we're gonna set up Congress, it says. So moving on to Congress. In this step, you determine the makeup of Congress, the legislative agendas, your congressional friends and opponents, and uh, the level of bipartisan cooperation. So I guess Congress is different than the domestic situation. Anyway, all right, I'll stop belaboring. So it says set the legislative majority for Congress according to the difficulty level that you uh, chose. So, for the easier game, the your party control counter in the party control box. So, the your party control counter, that was this one that was in this here, is this is going to go over to split party control or your party controls both houses. Now, this can change at the end of every year. Uh, or I think it's actually at the end of year two, it can change because midterm uh, elections. So I may have misspoke there, but I digress. So that is for the easier game. And now we're gonna go ahead and take a look up there back at the cabinet area. So all of this area here, and you'll see that we have public legislation priorities and then the administration legislation priorities. Okay, so we're gonna be setting those. Uh, at least the public one. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do them both. So put all the public priority counters in an opaque cup. Public priorities. Nope, other one. And those are that, right? So here we go. Okay, so that cup there. So we are going to shuffle this. And we're gonna draw five randomly and place them in the order drawn, one to five. Now, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kind of break that rule a little bit because I like drama. So we're gonna, we're gonna go five to one, because we can. All right, so here we go. Number five public priority is education reform. It's important, but it's not that important, okay? Okay, number four is, what do we have? Welfare reform, okay. So at least number five and number four, looking internally, okay. Shuffle again, here we go. And number three is energy independence. We are very much, uh, the public is very much looking internally so far. And now the two, top two ones, all right, Mike, we'll be here. Number two, is, oh God, the third rail of public office, social security. Oh. By the way, I'm actually currently uh, knee deep in the Jack Ryan, Tom Clancy series, and I'm reading, what is it, the, the Bear and the Dragon? So Jack Ryan's president, and they reference that social security is the third rail. 
numerous times. And so here we go. The number one most important public legislation priority is healthcare reform. Holy cow. It is entirely internally centric. Wow. I mean, to be clear, like, could have had gun control. It could have had job creation, tax reform. Well, I guess a lot of these. Uh, expanding the military, lingering domestic issue, immigration reform, um, cybersecurity, homeland security. So just those feel very, I don't know, just very insular. So, okay. All right. Those, hey, people want what the people want. Okay. There's that. Now, we're going to place uh, set your administration's legislative priorities. Administration. Oh, by the way, we will need the public ones again at the end of a year, potentially. Right? So we're just going to kind of set that off to the side for now. The administration ones, remember, look, uh, they mimic those uh, here. Um, they just have administration priority written on them. Okay. Place the administration legislative priority counters in a cup. Draw one randomly. This represents a campaign promise that you need to fulfill. Okay. And then empty the counters from the cup and then choose the other three. So we get to choose that collectively. Okay. Um, and the, the game does recommend that you, you kind of mimic the, the public. Okay, uh, place the remaining administrative legislative priorities back into the draw cup and we'll set those aside. So here we go. So this is a random draw for uh, the, the campaign promise. Oh, that one feels good. All right, the campaign promise says, I can't read that. Homeland Security, okay. Which apparently the public doesn't care about. Okay, so the rest of these we get to choose. Now, does it just make sense? Uh, the social security scares me, just on principle, okay? But, uh, healthcare reform, sure, I, I, I'm, I'm good with that. So let's see, healthcare, uh, now, here's the thing about this, is um, it says, considers choosing administration priorities that either mirror the public priorities or support the greater society initiatives that you want to pursue. Okay. So what is that talking about? So if we take a look, where is it? There it is. Here. We have space. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. There we go. Come on. Bring that in. All right. Budget or debt. We have health care and longevity, security and defense, uh, free and equal, science and tech, and space. So we could kind of choose these things because they're going to help our legacy. Or it could be we focus on the public, what they care about. I'm a man of the people. I feel like caring about what the people care about is kind of what matters, right? So healthcare reform, I think that's important. And I'll be honest, the VA has been great to me. Let's do it. Healthcare reform, I'm good with that being number one. Now, energy independence, I think is great. Welfare reform, also important. Education reform, I mean, yes, all of these. Notice I didn't mention social security, but here is where y'all come in. Choose the others. I'm going to force y'all to choose at least one from that list. Um, I'll, while y'all are deciding, there's privacy legislation, there's welfare reform, gun legislation, uh, expanding NASA funding. I mean, that one, having just gone to the Kennedy Space Center, I think that's awesome, but it's not a priority right now, I don't think. Uh, tax reform, immigration reform, job creation package, lingering domestic issue, don't care about that really. Uh, energy independence, social security, 
education reform, expanded military, infrastructure upgrades, or cybersecurity. Wow. I, I, I like that. Wow. Almost universally, uh, y'all are saying energy and education. I like that. I'm good with that. I like that. So uh, let's do it. So education and energy independence. Now, what's the priority? All right. Uh, I mean, it should be energy independence number two and education number three. It should be that, given what the people want. And now these will be set aside now that we've chosen those. Okay? Yeah. Um, the initial state of the economy is, is, is really solid. Um, it's in between recovery and peak performance. It's, it's in really good shape right here. It starts at six, so that's really good. All right, yep, um, all right, so we will go. Now, that's not to say the other things don't matter to us, but there you go. Okay, yeah, we're listening to the people. All right, and, and it seems y'all are on board with this, so okay, here's, here's where we're set up. This is our administrative legislative priorities. Excellent, all right, and now we're gonna deal with our, or find out who our congressional friends and opponents are. One cup done, one to go, a moment. All right, I appreciate that this is interactive. This is great, I'm having fun, hopefully y'all are. All right, so now we have friends and opponents. Okay, and we, we covered these earlier, but I, I will refresh. This is uh, cup number, I don't know, I wanna say, Four and five, okay? So friends in one me and opponents in another. Separate them into two draw cups. Now, it's funny to me, it says to do that, but we've already been told to do that earlier in the rule book, but I digress. Again, don't skip sentences. Depending on your party control, our party control is, our party controls both houses, okay? Depending on if uh, setup were different, if it were a split, then we would have different numbers of these. That's where that comes in. Okay. I like that, Bob. Number one admin legislative priority des designating the first week of October as National Board Game Week. I mean, I'm living it. I'm okay with that. Well, I guess you all are vicariously with me as well. All right. Uh, so, uh, for if your party controls, which it does, um, we get to draw and place three friends and two opponents. So, three and two. If it were a split control, it would be two and two. If it were opposing party, it would be two and three, and that would make life way difficult. All right. All right. Take care, Rocky. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, so it says place all drawn friends for the easier game and opponents on their moderate side if they have one. If both are the same, it doesn't matter what side you select. This will give you a higher level of initial bipartisan cooperation. And what that matters is for this box up here. The further to the right it is, the easier it's going to be for us to be able to get bills passed and more bills passed. This makes it really difficult. Okay, so with that said, we get to draw three friends. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we go. And not looking. So we have one, we have two, and I mean, isn't this how you draw your friends anyways, right? All right, three, and I will set this aside. Done. All right. So our three friends, and this actually we will go and drop down a little, so we have a little room. Here we go. One at a time. We have, uh, Kalei Tamaki is a moderate, not media. We would know if it was media if it helped in the top left corner. So, okay, that's a one. Not great. Bigger numbers are better. Okay. Number two is Julia Chen. Moderate. It's a one and a media two. That's a, that's a good thing. All right, good. And 
They, uh, again, moderate on both sides, so it doesn't matter what side we have in that case. And finally, we have Sarah Riley, uh, media two and a two. So this is, this is pretty solid, getting four here. She's radical on that side, radical on that side, so there we go. There are our three friends in Congress. Okay, so we have Calais, Julia, and Sarah. So, all right. Welcome, thank you. I will place those here in a moment. However, we need to draw two of these. Lower numbers are better for us. So, not looking. We have one there and one, come on, one there. We will set that aside. All right, so who do we have? We have, as an opponent, we have Charles Gates. Media one and a two. He's tough. All right, he's a radical. Okay. And then we have Samuel Black. Media two and only a one. Okay. Moderate on both sides as well. So there we go. So what this means is they have a media strength, if you will, of three. We have a media strength of four. That's good. And we have a total strength of four, a one, a one, and a two. And they have a total strength, if you will, of three. So it's four to three. That is also beneficial. Okay, so yay. That, that was a pretty solid draw. Pretty happy with that overall. And the fact that we're higher on both and that at least one of the opponents is a moderate. So that is good. Let me go ahead and... Bust that out over there. All right, so you'll notice our congressional friends go here, our congressional opponents go there. The order of which does not matter. So just like that, as long as they are visible. There we go. Cool, so we have gotten those. Now, next, we're going to figure out our bipartisan cooperation here. Examine the friends and the opponents you drew looking for radical and moderate ratings. If there are more total radicals than moderates, so we have moderate, moderate, radical, radical, moderate. So a total of three moderates and two radicals. So moderates outnumber the radicals. But if the radicals outnumbered the moderates, then the bipartisan cooperation, and I want to remind you all of where to go. A moment. Yep, wrong one. Remember these chits that we left over here for this board? Now we're going to grab the bipartisan cooperation one here. So getting back up here now. If there were more uh, radicals than moderates, it would start there. That's no bueno. The leftmost one box. There are two ones, but that one. That would have been bad. If the number of radicals and moderates are equal, it would be that box, the rightmost number one. However, if there are more moderates, one, two, three, versus two radicals, which there are, place the bipartisan cooperation counter in the leftmost two box. Wee! It starts there. Those are the three options and where it can start, okay? So that was, that was pretty solid. Cannot complain at all. So very happy with how things are setting up here and our cabinet. Very, very happy with that. Okay, the next step now is going to be step five, which is the US military, okay? So the US military, it is only these two things. What I don't understand why they put this is in the setup, when you pass. Okay, I don't care about that in setup. Don't, don't do whatever. Put that somewhere else. Anyway, I digress. Okay. So, US military. In this step, you place initial US military forces. So now, we're going to go ahead and come back to the CONUS area. So the CONUS area says, we are going to place one Air Force, one Marine Corps, by the way, Marine Corps or Marine equals USMC for those that are not familiar with the United States Marine Corps. So there you go. Uh, I saw there was a question on BGG about that. One Air Force, one Marine, 
USMC. I'll use those terms interchangeably. I'm a Marine. I get away with that. Uh, one carrier, a spec ops, and an Intel. And wouldn't you know, that's what we have up here. So first off, we have an Air Force. Now, I do want to point out that some of these are double-sided. They're the same. So the Air Force is double-sided. It is a strength three. The Marines, I do not know why it did not explain this here in scenario setup, but I'm going to help y'all. When it is actually out on land somewhere, on land meaning into one of these areas, whatever it might be, it goes onto the three side. When it's amphibious, meaning it is out here in the various uh, uh, deployed um, on carrier or with carriers and such and, and whatnot, it then will be on the two side, but as it is, it starts on the three side. So we have the Air Force, USAF. We have a Marine, USMC. We have a carrier, and the carriers are twos no matter what side. So we put it there in the US Forces box. A Spec Ops and an Intel. So the Spec Ops, which is a one strength, same on both sides, same with the Intel. Those two are kind of joined at the hip the Spec Ops and the Intel. So I'm gonna kinda separate them just a little bit. And we, even though we still have the Ally stuff, we're not told to place it yet. So I told you, we were going to, we were going to hit this box three times during setup. The first one for those, the second one for this, and the third one, we'll get there, okay? Again, I didn't write it. Okay, so that is the CONUS for US forces. And now we have to come back over here for the US military assets. All right, let me, there we go. Move that baggie a little bit. So we have this. So it says, place the following US military units in the corresponding US military asset legislative holding box, it's a lot of words, on the domestic game board. So in other words, there, place those. Okay, so we got our baggie. Yeah, we haven't burned it to the ground, we're okay. And this is going into the sideboard master bag. I mean, I did set aside an entire day just for setup to be able to walk y'all through this. That's what we're doing. All right, so it should be Two USMC or two Marine, it does not matter the side that it goes on. Um, so we have one there and we have, I mean, we have Harriers. So there we go, okay? So there's that, there's two of those. Then we have two, I'm sorry, three US Army Light. The Army Light are the same on both sides. The Army Light are the, I think these are Apaches? No, maybe they are. I don't know what those are. So anyway, three of those helicopters stacked up, done. Next, we have two US Army heavies. Those are Abram tanks. So one there, one there. Next, we have one Air Force, which the Air Force, that's a F-35, I think. And finally, a carrier. These units are not available at the start of the game and only become available through congressional action. So those are going to just hang out for a while, okay? All right, good. Hey, Chris, thanks. By the way, uh, Chris, no one cares, I do. Um, your, your last name there, Traeger, that's, uh, we, we have one of those incoming. Just bought one for the house. We have a Traeger, smoker, can't wait, comes this week. Cannot wait. All right, anyway, um, now we are going into step six, and step six is, ooh, that was bright, sorry about that. Ah, geez, the world. So now we are going to mess with and set up all the rest of this, okay? As well as that and that, okay. <laughs> it is true. I did not uh, lobby that GMT increased the rating on the Marine Corps counter. That, that is true. I did not. 
Didn't we say those were Blackhawks last time? I Are they? They don't look like Blackhawks. Oh, right. They're Blackhawks, not a pack. Yes, we did. I made the same mistake, Josh. Blackhawks. I'm just saying. I like. I wonder, like, any any affiliation there, Chris? Because if so, we need to talk. Anyway, uh, so the world. We are going to set these up area by area as it spells these out. Okay. Now it says set all conflict status markers and their relative strength markers at their on start on the conflict track. So we're going to be working over here to start. Okay. All right. So conflict tracks, there are obviously each track, India, China, India, Pakistan, Russia, NATO, Russia, Ukraine, China, Japan, uh, uh, North Korea, South Korea, Iran and Israel, Israel and their neighbors, uh, the Gulf states and, South, uh, and Saudi Arabia it, slash Iran. And then the last one is US Iran. We'll get there. So we dump all those. This goes back into the sideboard or yeah, the sideboard baggie. They're a dis distant cousin, so no freebies for you. Oh, so sad. So, so sad. I've been meaning to ask you that. All right, you'll notice that there are two different types of counters here. There is a relative strength counter, and there is a conflict status counter. This one, pretty straightforward. So conflict status, the status goes on to the at start, wherever that is. The relative strength goes on to the relative strength. So for instance, China, Japan, it starts at one, and the strength leans towards China. What this means is there are going to be various checks that were table checks, uh, die roll checks that we're going to be using these tracks for. And also, the further this comes down into war, the worse things get. And let me set this up, then I'll finish explaining this a little bit better. So we're just going to set up all 10 tracks the exact same way, just matching up what it is. So. Russia, Ukraine is a plus three to Russia. China, Japan is a plus one to China as far as their relative strength is what I'm talking about. And you'll notice that Russia, Ukraine starts at a three of five, okay? Also, I do wanna point out that there are three different um, intensities, I think. Uh, there is a gray war, there is a red war, and then there is a 50-50. Okay, we'll talk about those here in a little bit. So the conflict status for these. So India, China, they're super chill. India, Pakistan, mostly chill. Russia, NATO, mostly chill, all right? The relative strength on Russia and NATO is plus one to Russia. The relative strength for India, Pakistan is plus one to India. And the India, China uh, starts at plus one China. Now, moving on down there, we then have North Korea and South Korea mostly chill at two, and they start dead even on their relative strength. Israel and Iran, again, mostly chill, and their relative strength is plus one to Israel. Israel and their neighbors, mostly chill, but not really. And what I mean by that is, yeah, it only starts at two, but the track only goes to four. So be careful on this one, okay? It's something to uh, monitor, because again, Israel, I mean, it's the Middle East. And it starts with a plus two to Israel. The Gulf states and Saudi Arabia versus Iran, mostly chill, plus one to Iran. And finally, US and Iran, super chill. Um, and obviously plus three to the U.S., okay? All right, now that I've laid those out, let's come back up. And I mentioned the three different kind of levels here of those. The conflict tracks. Here, if war breaks out on either of those tracks, the game ends immediately in an automatic defeat for the U.S. president. So if we, uh, China and Japan or Russia and NATO ever go to war, we lose. We have failed. Not yet. We haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Everyone wants to do things out of order. Just chill. We got this. So if this conflict status ever gets the five, we lose. Hard stop. Game over. 
okay? Done. Now, if it's the 50-50, if Israel or Iran are at war, so this one, um, and the Iran nuclear track is at five, or if the Koreas are at war and the North Korea nuke track is at five, the game ends in an immediate loss. So we'll, we'll, I'll cover that a little bit more in detail in a moment, okay? And then finally, the four track with the asterisk. When this track reaches war status, roll a D10 to determine who's at war. Is it Israel versus Hezbollah? Is it Israel versus Hamas? Is it Israel versus Egypt? Or is it Israel versus Hezbollah and Hamas? So depending on what we roll. So if that ever happens, all right? So that is the conflict tracks set up. And now we're gonna go ahead and move up to here. We're gonna do the nuke tracks, which reference these two down here. And then we're also gonna set up the strategic capability tracks. Okay? All right. All right, so that is those. That bag, that goes back into the sideboard master bag. Okay. Doug, you're a little behind. I appreciate the input, though. Thank you. All right, so now, actually, let's go ahead and move up and take a look at that, the nuclear missile tracks right there. Try and squeeze that over just a little, and we're gonna have to come out. There we go. Nuclear slash missile tracks, okay? Um, yeah, don't trigger nuclear war. That'd be good. Okay, so at start, so over here, Iran starts there. At two, if it gets to five, and Israel, Iran goes to war, down here in the bottom left corner, here we lose, if that's at five. The other one, let's find it, it's in, there we go. North Korea uh, missile program starts at two, it says at start, so no need for a dot there. And then if that reaches five, which is mass deployment, um, I've never had to move those tracks in my two one year versions of this. And again, if that's at five and that's at five, we lose, okay? Oh, I, I caught the War Games reference, Jowser. I got that, so. All right, so now we're gonna set up the strategic capabilities track, which is right there. All right, so here we go. The, I'm just gonna kind of move these over to there. So there's going to be one Russian, there's going to be one Chinese, and there's going to be one US per track, okay? So for the Air Force training and tech, the U.S. starts at one, the others start at, or I'm sorry, the U.S. starts at two, the others start at one. So I'm going to put Russia on top. And the only reason for this is to keep it consistent, but also Russia's on top of China over here. It's just a kind of driving home. Russia's on top, so Russia's on top. And it's just, again, anything that I can do to help run this smoother, that's what I'm trying to do and recommend for y'all. The next is ground forces training and tech. So we need one of each. And this is the US at two, the others at one. And these are double-sided, but they're the same on both sides. There we go. Naval for, oh, next page, a moment. And uh, for what it's worth, um, I very much am keeping my finger on where we are because all of this, it gets to be a lot. So I definitely recommend taking your time and double checking everything because this sets the game up at, a, at the right state and it'll be either too easy or too hard for you otherwise. So be smart. Um, next one is going to be Naval Forces Training and Tech. We start at U, uh, the three at US, everybody else at two. So there and there. Okay. Cyber warfare. 
Everybody starts at two, except for us. We start at one. And this is a real important one to get boosted up. We do not want them ahead of us in cyber warfare. Uh, I found this out in my last playthrough of this. So I would argue that this is probably, at least in my experience so far, the thing that I need to focus on most. This is the most important of these tracks. Not saying the others aren't important, just that feels like the most important. Next, sp space warfare, lasers. Uh, China is at two. The US and Russia are both at one. Okay. Next, strategic missiles and missile defense. Uh, we're at two, Russia's at two, China's at one. And finally, the last one is strategic recon and intel gathering. We're at three, the others are at one. So we start with a pretty big lead on those. There we go. So that is, this entire board is now set up. Except for the decks of cards, we have the nuke track, we have strategic capabilities, we have the conflict tracks. We have the bills, we have kind of the state of the US, if you will. We have uh, Congress and our opponents and friends in Congress. That board is 100% set up, except for the cards. So now, we are going to work on this stuff. Now you'll note that our party relations, we, did I miss that? It's funny, I tell you all to go step by step, but it's still easy to miss it. So let me check if I, make sure I didn't miss that. Could be that it gets set up later. Oh my God, I know it's in here. I just am missing it. Okay. Start at the beginning. A moment, y'all, I apologize. Legacy, turn counter. There, allies and rogues, legislation, Russia and China, the cards, the sideboard, difficulty levels. Attributes, White House, Cabinet effectiveness is set. Exceptional White House. Ah, I did miss it. Did I mention? You can do that. And I thought I was going through this slowly. Draw your exceptional White House resource. <laughs> right there. Party relations. Place your party relations counter at six. So my bad. Apologies. So. That was this chit that is down here, the last one that was in this bag with that stuff. Um, party relations, it starts at six. You're allowed a maximum of four friends. Your friends list is full at that point. So that will go right there. Apologies. I knew it was on there, I just couldn't find it. All right. Oh, hey, Gene's here. Hey, what's up? Thank you for this. By the way, I don't know if you saw the very beginning, Gene, but I am really, really grateful that you own, or at least, you know, founded, co-found, co-own GMT, because let's face it, I'm just gonna, I, I'm trying to picture a designer pitching this to a publisher. So no, it's only four turns. 
and here's one turn. Like, that's comical, but I am, I am really grateful. So, all right. All right. So, hey, I'm glad you made it. Hopefully, you can uh, stop on by throughout. Okay. So, I apologize. I missed that step. Backing up. Okay. Now, we are on to, we did this whole board. This whole area is set up. And now, everything that's left is over here, which is the world. Okay. All right. We start off setting up Russia and China. So, Russia and China, respectively, are those two. So, I will take Russia's bag. I'm just going to dump those, and same with China. I'm going to dump those. Okay. Those will go back into, remember the main board bag there. All right, so now we are going to set these up one at a time. Russia, state of economy counter to four, China to five. So China's state of economy, notice again, I put a dot, is it five, and Russia's state of economy is four or stagnating, okay. Next, set the posture according to difficulty level. So, easier game, both of them start to one. Posture in a normal game, it's two for Russia, one for China. And the Russia acts, crisis chit in the uh, crisis chit's cup. So remember, I mentioned these down here at the bottom. In the normal game, one of these, which I believe is the Russia one, yeah. This one goes into the crisis chit cup. So the cup of death, if you were. But, again, because we have the entire week set up, we're playing the easier side. Both postures start with one. So posture one and posture one. Don't judge. Okay. Next, draw and place one multilateral sanction counter on Russia. So now, remember, over here to my right, I'm going to take place one of these on Russia. So there we go. And it is a multilateral Done. Next, place two tension counters on Russia and one tension counter on China. So again, remember, here, right, gonna do this on the honor system. So we're getting two on Russia and one on China. I'm just making sure that the backs are down. We don't want to ruin the surprise. Two on Russia. So two tensions, one there. Okay. Now, note, those were not in the bags because those are the random draws. That's why I don't do that. Then, place Russia's relations with the U.S. counter on the two box of Russia's relations with the U.S. Okay, so relations with the U.S. It's distrust. That's not great. And with a trending anti-U.S. counter. Okay, fine. So the anti-U.S., that'll just go like so there. Finally, China's relations with the U.S. is four, right there. Now, there is, let me find it, I have it over here. There is a China pro-U.S. on one side, anti-U.S. on the other, but it doesn't say to place it at the beginning of the game. So this is going to go into my other China slash Russia cup, which is not it right here, which this is not an influence cup, but it's other stuff, okay? Um, so remember, that is a half step, just like what I mentioned uh, for the improvement, the cabinet improving, or that is a half step. So if we ever do anything like place another anti-US for Russia, that will actually drop and the anti-US will come back, okay? All right, that is it for Russia and China. So we have tension markers, we have a multilateral sanction, and they're both of their postures at one. These tension counters, we will be told when to flip those, basically whenever Russia and China acts respectively, okay? And I do appreciate, I understand that, Gene, but I also am trying to put money in your pocket because by playing easy, 
I'm not dissuading people. And this way I can actually maybe make it the whole year or the whole, the whole term, I mean. So yeah, you know, there. It, it, Gene says, although total transparency, I did lose a game on easy about three months ago. <laughs> ah, there you go. Awesome. Um, hold on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's what the holding box is for. So like this is like other chits. Oh. I've never, I've, I've wondered what that's for. I guess that makes sense. So if that's the case, then here, I'm going to actually use that as a, that's one less thing I gotta mess with. So like they're plus one AP markers. Oh, I like this. Um, whenever there's a summit, we have a Russia and China summit. So we'll do the bottom part for China, top part for Russia. Awesome. Um, bases, which, oh my God, these are such a pain in the butt. Um, we really don't want bases and China likes to put out bases and bases are effectively permanent. That's a ton of influence. I've yet to encounter any Russian bases, thankfully, but I'm sure we will at some point. All right, cool. So we have a little holding box. That's nice. Never even used that. Okay. Nice. All right, now, there are also influence. These I'm not gonna put there because it's gonna be a ton. I'm actually just gonna hold these off camera, okay? Now, there is one, uh, you know what? Nope, I'll do that later, Never mind. Uh, okay, so now, it says, the world region has a similar setup, except only the Eurozone has a, a strength of economy track or state of the economy. So the Eurozone has this green track. That's the only other one, much like um, Russia and China. But otherwise, all of these are not identical, but they're all similar when we get to for setup stuff. So again, in the easier game, I told you it's going to remind you this three times. It reminded us at the beginning, when we set the difficulty to remove a terror, a level one terror group from every box out here, it's reminding us again to do it. Hence, see where I highlighted right there? And it's going to remind us again at the end because you're going to forget, which I do all the time. So there's that. So we start with the Eurozone. Eurozone. We will dump the bag. Okay, all of those are for the Eurozone. Empty bag goes into the master main bag. Okay, here we go. Now, there are a number of chits that I wanna highlight, and I'm going to highlight it specifically on this one. And it is, oops. All right, these three chits. So we have the regional crisis, we have the regional alignment, and we have regional stability. The, every, every area outside of CONUS, but the Eurozone, Eastern Europe, the Middle East, Central America, etc., all of them have those three chits. And all three of these are going to be various fires that we're going to have to put out throughout the game. All right? So where these are set is going to be dictated by the, by the, uh, the setup. All right? So I do now... I, I put my little marks, you'll see the little dot right there, as a crisis, um, regional crisis marker for each in the, in the sandbox. I did not set these uh, for the uh, regional stability and alignment, and the reason is I wasn't sure how to mark each one respectively. I mean, I could have done an S and an A for them, but I thought that would look ugly, so I didn't. Okay, so the rest of this, I'm just gonna kind of, as we walk, walk through it. So here we go. Regional alignment to six, stability to six. So stability and alignment. Now, those can be stacked up right there. However, because we're streaming, I, I like having them out. Plus, I like being able to see them at a glance. Obviously, that's on six, because five's below, seven's above. And then the regional crisis we know goes to zero because I previously had marked that. Next, uh, place a trending pro-US counter next to the alignment track. Now, I have these set up 
and they are double-sided. One is pro-US, one is anti-US, and the pro-US, you can just do like so. Okay, so put a pro-US next to the alignment track. So there we go, easy enough, however, works for y'all. Set the state of economy to five, and we have a dot there for that. So the state of economy is five. There you go. That one is what's going to be the oddball for the Eurozone again. Place the following counters in the Eurozone. One Russian influence. Now, all the influence are China on one side, Russia on the other. So we throw a Russia up there. I'm just going to move these out of the way. So Russia influence will go there. Next, the NATO and UK ally counters in their respective boxes on the very close side. So there are two allies in this area. Obviously, we have the UK, which is strange. There are three levels. If there's no marker, it says close. If it's further away, bad for us, it's estranged. And if it's good for us, it is very good. So we will put the very, or I'm sorry, uh, very close. So we put that, same with the NATO. It, all of the ally markers have the exact same three steps. Estranged, close, or very close. So we put those there, done. Next, one Air Force counter and one U.S. Army heavy in the holding box. So an Air Force there and a U.S. Army heavy there. And then... Place a carrier and a Marine Corps, or USMC, in the med. So, this took me a very long time to figure this out because you're so looking at the, and you're like, where the hell is I, the med? In between, notice that it's connected to various spots, right? The Middle East, you have the Eurozone, Eastern Europe, and there's another one that comes on down to Africa, that long one. So, the carrier and the Marine Corps comes out into the med. And what did I say earlier? Even though it doesn't call it out here, it should, but it doesn't. The Marine Corps, when out in the water, goes on the two side there. So it is like so. So now we have the entire Eurozone set up. Okay? Done. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Okay? All right. So that is the Eurozone. Now, next, we move over to Eastern Europe. And we're going to do this for every one of them. Yes, it's very tedious, and that's why I have them bagged at the end for all of this, because this is going to save you a plethora of time uh, when you're setting this up. Next, Eastern Europe. Regional alignment is to six, stability to five. Stability to five. Regional alignment to six. Regional crisis is going to be at one. There. Place the following counters in Eastern Europe. One Russian influence. Okay, done. A level one terror group. So that level one terror group gets placed there. One Civil War ceasefire counter. So that is the ceasefire, and remember those are double-sided. It's the same thing on both sides for the ceasefires. And a army light in the holding box, and these are the same on both sides as well. So Eastern Europe is set up there, okay? Thank you, Banker Dave. All right, now we are on to the Middle East. All right. And I have a cool little, this is a pretty big box. Uh, it has a lot of stuff. I also have a reminder here. It says two random U.S. footprints, but the rules will tell me that, but I don't put them in the bag because, again, random. Good luck to your uh, Broncos, Dave. All right, here we go. The Middle East. Set the regional alignment to five, stability to four. There we go. So that is alignment to five, stability to four. And then the regional crisis to three. Um, I would like to point out, major crisis. Um, again, it, when we get there, as soon as a major crisis happens, 
It's like an interrupt. Stop what you're doing and do that. And uh, this just then, it's never good. So getting this knocked down is definitely going to be a priority for us. Place a trending anti-US on the alignment. Anti-US, boo, they don't like us. So do like so, okay. And now the Israel ally on the very close and place a tension marker in the Israel ally box. So let's find Israel, do, do, do. Israel is right here. Uh, oh, sorry, not estranged, very close. And we will randomly grab a tension marker. Oh, we saw that one, let's try that again. Should be able to feel it. I feel like that's right, it is. There we go. And we put a random tension marker in the tension box there. Next, the Gulf States slash Saudi Arabia ally counter. It says put it to the off to the side. Now, the Gulf States, again, they're an ally. It's estranged, close, or very close. For me, I'm worried about knocking stuff over here. So instead, what I do is I take this and I put it down here to the bottom of the board because it can't make it onto the board accidentally. So in other words, it stays as close at the beginning of the game and that shit will stay down here and hang out. And place a tension counter in that box. Right there. Okay. Next, place a tension counter on the Iran, rogue state. So Iran, it doesn't say rogue state, but Iran, it goes there like so. Uh, a civil war counter with the civil war side up. This represents Syria. So the civil war counter right here on the bottom side, uh, the back side, remember, is unstable state. Um, foreshadowing, notice that there are those. So the civil war is there. And now two unstable states there and there, which again, other side is civil war. A level one and three level two terror groups. So a level one and three level twos, because Middle East, there we go. A Russia influence counter right there. And if playing with a harder game, do stuff, we're not gonna bother with it, we don't need to worry about. It. An Intel, a Spec Ops, an Air Force, and a Marine. A Spec Ops and an Intel. What did I do with the, oh, there it is. And again, a Marine, it's deployed to an area, so it's on the three side and an Air Force. There we go. And finally, remember at the beginning, I said there are two random US military footprint counters. So here, I will grab that stack. I'm gonna put them right here by the military. Those are random. And remember, those are negative. We want to remove those, but it basically pisses off the area whenever we have US forces deployed to the area. So we would like to get those removed, okay? All right. All right. I got you, Doug. I'll take care of it. Um, okay, so that is the Middle East. There's a lot going on there in the Middle East, as you can see. And it looks like a lot, but again, it's actually really, really well done. Uh, and it's, it's, again, as long as you step through the procedures on this, you're not gonna, it's, it's actually a relatively simple game, mechanically. All right, so we are done with the Middle East, down to Africa. All right, back into the bag o baggies to keep things organized. All right, Africa. Alignment to five, stability to four. Alignment to five, stability, I'll set that aside, there it is. Stability to four, and you got it. Crisis to three, there's a dot there, take my word for it. Um, dimension, hotspots, right? I mean, makes sense. 
All right, so a China influence. Uh, I got one in here. All right, there we go. And again, if it was flipped over, whatever. So China influence. One Civil War counter on the Civil War side. That represents Somalia. Again, the theme on that. Two unstable states, because, again, Africa. I'm just trying to organize it a little bit better for when we do it. Two level ones and a level two. So two level ones and a level two terror group. A Intel and Spec Ops. And a carrier goes into the Indian Ocean. So that will go right there. Okay. So again, the Indian Ocean is pointing at uh, Central South Asia, uh, the Middle East, and Africa. Done. Speaking of Central South Asia, right here. Now we're going to bust that one out. Now, I don't expect Gene and Mike to be here the entire time because, you know, it's seven days and, you know, they work. But um, I welcome any, like, rules, questions like that because I haven't encountered everything. Let's face it. So having, having them assist on that, I am happy, happy for them to do so. Now, for setup questions, that I'm happy to take care of today, et cetera, et cetera. But you get the idea. All right. Central South Asia. So regional alignment to five, stability to five. Boom, boom. A regional crisis to two. And there. Trending anti-US. So not pro, but anti. Boo. They don't like us over there. A Russia and a China influence. So we got one of each. Okay. One level one and one level two terror group. A one and a two. A one and a two. And a, okay. Just getting these ready. Okay. Next, one unstable state. So that is an unstable state. One level one rogue state that represents the Taliban and the ally, excuse me, and the allies in Afghanistan. Remember, these are double sided. They go up to four, and the other ones are threes and fours. So, we do start with a rogue state there. If on harder levels, then they're already at war. We don't need to worry about that. The India ally starts at close. So, what does that mean? The India ally that will come down below just like the Saudi Arabia one, and I'll just keep those right there. If they come into play, be it very close or estranged, I will do so. And then a tension counter on the India ally. There. A Army Light, an Air Force, Intel, and Spec Ops. An Army Light, an Air Force, an Intel, and a Spec Ops. So done. And a military footprint, randomly drawn, because, again, they don't like that. But sometimes it'd be like that. Good enough. Uh, that was Central South Asia. So now we are on to, you know what? I told you I was going to use that as a marker for what area we're working. So coming on down. It's a little crooked, I understand, but, hey, PTZ can only do so much. Yeah, Mike brings up a good point here too. He says, I have, he, he's, the, he's the lead developer. I haven't even encountered everything in the game. It amazes me uh, what pops up and I just shake my head and say, wow, really? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? So that's inevitable in a game this go. I have no idea, by the way, how the hell you come up with this. Like for a design and a development, God bless you. I'm grateful that you all do though, because for Gene, I don't know if you know this, but this is, was my number, for six years, this has been my number one most anticipated game, so I'm glad it's finally here. Just saying. Uh, I, I am grateful. Very much so. All right. This is a pretty crowded box as well, so here we go. 
Regional alignment to six, stability to six. I mean, they're, they're, that's pretty good to start. There we go. And uh, regional crisis to one. So it's, it's pretty chill overall. Place the following counters. Japanese ally to very close. So, and just going to move these down there, there, get that over here, get that over there. Okay. Japanese to very close. Next page. Good news. We're on page 10 of 12. We're almost there. All right. Oh, it has. And, and again, Gene, I just want to point out this is amazing. Like just th this is both hysterically comical and legitimately amazing, like well done. So this, I love, yeah. The game's more epic than I thought it was going to be, I'll tell you that, in a good way. All right, moving on. Ally counter. Uh, for Australia, to very close, because, you know, don't want to hurt no kangaroo. Tell me somebody gets that reference. Just somebody, please. The ROK, uh, so South Korea, very close. Place a tension counter. In the ROK ally box. Uh, place a tension counter and a UN sanction counter in North Korea. Okay, so I'm just getting that ready. So a tension, uh, I lost my spot. Tension counter and a UN sanction. So tension and a UN sanction. And so the UN will go there. Oops. And a tension will go into the tension. All right, one China influence. Okay, good to go. A level one and a level two terror counter. So we have one and two. Done. These will come on down. Okay. Now, this is an important uh, distinction. A U.S. Army heavy in the ROK box. So for me, I just keep this kind of, you know what, actually, wait, I'm sorry, wrong one. Army heavy, where'd it go? <gasps> I may have grabbed the wrong one. Oh, no, there it is, army heavy. So what I do is I kind of underneath it like this. And the reason is, it is permanent. It can never live anywhere else, it cannot move. So I kind of pin it down underneath the ROK, but I keep it there as a reminder. Okay, as the rules call out. And then uh, a carrier, a Marine, and an Air Force unit in the, for, in the holding box. So Air Force, Marine, and a carrier there. And finally, place a carrier in the Eastern Pacific. Right there. Done. Now we're moving on over. There we go. Central and South America are the last two. Those are the last two bags that we have. So you'll, you can tell we're almost done, y'all. Almost. All right. Back into the baggie. It dumps. And you know what? Just, just to save myself a tiny bit of time. Okay. Okay, Central America. Alignment to five, stability to four. So not very stable down there. Alignment to five, stability to four. And the regional crisis at two. A level one terror group and a level two terror group. Those are the drug cartels. Makes sense. One unstable state. Pick one. Spec Ops in an Intel. Done. That's pretty easy. Finally, South America. Alignment to five, stability to five. Regional crisis to one. It's pretty chill. A China influence. Monroe Doctrine says that's got to go. A level one terror group. And an unstable counter. Uh, unstable state represents Venezuela, because Venezuela. And again, the 
backside of that is the Civil War, but, or the front side as it were. Now, you'd think we're done, but we're not, because for the third time, now we come back to CONUS. Canada, the very close. Also hold your initial military forces that we set up earlier. And that's done. Now, the last bit, and I wanna, I wanna point this out to folks. Did I, I, I mentioned earlier that there are three times it's going to remind you to remove terror groups and to set your, uh, uh, based on your difficulty and adjust the Russian and Chinese influence track. So that, do not skip this note. So we are playing on the easier level, so we get to remove one level one terror group from every box and then the China and it, uh, Russia influence track. So we'll start with the influence track. So if we take a look, we'll, we'll start, Russia's on top. How many Russian influence do you see? One, two, three, four. Okay, four. So there is, you just grab a influence marker for respective, Influence will go for there for Russia. And then for China, we're looking at one, two, three, four. Is that right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I guess they both started four. I thought they didn't, but yeah, my bad. Again, Russia on top when tied, right? Because China's on the bottom there. So there's our influence. One, two, three. Yeah, they both started four. I thought they started higher. Okay. And then removing one level one terror group. So if you take a look. So what's that mean? Literally that gets removed, that gets removed, one of these gets removed, one of these gets removed, but there's still a whole lot of hate and discontent over there, and then one here, one here, one here. And I'm pretty sure I grabbed Africa already. You probably could do that a little bit more organized than I did, I apologize. Two level ones and a level two, this year. yeah, we're good. Okay, so all of these now go back into that, remember our holding thing, hoo yeah. Okay, and last thing, other than the cards, are the wars. Because we're playing on the easier, no wars. Okay, so what that means is outside of the decks of cards, the game is completely set up and ready to rock and roll now. Okay, now, this is the last time I'm gonna drive this point home. All of those baggies for from here over go into here. It's going to save you so much time setting this up. Look, I realize that this is a three hour stream for setup and an overview, but I'm being very pedantic and stepping through every step of this for y'all. It's going to save you so much time. I, it's a lot of baggies or if you have any GMT counter trace, whatever. But for me, baggies work really well. Just set them out there, boom, and then walk through the steps. So that one is done. The sideboard is done. And the other one I already tossed is for the, uh, for the uh, little holding box board. So these are done until we set it up or clean it up on Saturday. Those can go away. Now it's time to set up the deck. Okay? All right, so here we go. Last thing, need a drink, hold on. Construct a crisis deck. Okay, shuffle all the event cards. Just take my word for it that I've done it. That's a lot, I got my shuffler um, that, that uh, Jess was kind enough to get me. So anyway, uh, but they're shuffled. So. Uh, divide them equally into four roughly equal stacks. I mean, y'all know I'm gonna actually. One, those are way too big. 
So there, there. These will be equal. I'm just not counting them. I'm just going to kind of push them down. Talk amongst yourselves. Go ahead. There we go. We have four roughly equal stacks. I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. So now the year one stack is the deck you start the game with and is placed in the crisis deck slot on the map. Where's that? that? That'd that be way up yonder. Okay. The other three decks are placed above year two, three, and four, way up top up there. So in year one, we're going to remove seven cards. So this is going to be year one, randomly chosen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. So I'm just going to temporarily put that there so I remember which is year one. So these, out of the game. Then, in year two, we're going to go ahead and say that this one remove 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Those can be added to the other seven that we removed, that's fine. That's gonna be year two. Year three, remove 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Again, added to the ones removed. That's year three. And year four, remove 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there are less cards getting added every turn. Okay, so these are the events that are removed from the game that just never, I mean, there's a lot. That is a pretty sizable stack. Okay, now these are going to live over here in the corner in case for any reason that I'm not thinking of that we need those for whatever reason, okay? Uh, Christopher, how does multiplayer work? Tune in this week, you'll get to see it. All right, so now, place the removed event cards back in the game boxes, they will not be used during this game. Okay, fine, I'll move, you know what, fine. So, there, done. All right, natural disasters. Now shuffle all the natural disasters. It's a small deck, but I mean, they suck. So there we go. So shuffling those, place one randomly face down in each of the four stacks, place the remaining natural disasters in a face down stack near the game board. Game events may instruct you to, you know, draw more. Okay, so here and there. So one, 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 and one, these will stay, and by the way, I'm gonna keep them face up next to the board, and the reason I do that is I can always shuffle those up, but this way I know which stack at a glance, so that's why I do it that way. So now, it's, uh, now it pauses us, and notice the blue background here. It says, depending on your difficulty, here you go. So for an easier game, that's what we're playing. Shuffle all the terrorism cards, <laughs> yeah, okay. And randomly place two face down in each of the four stacks. Place the unused near the game board because you're going to have a terrorism deck. You might have to draw more. Sudden outburst of terrorism activity. Okay, so two of these in each. Two. Two. And two. And again, I'm going to keep these face up, but let's face it. I'm not reading these, I'm not looking at these, I don't want to ruin the surprise and ruin my own enjoyment of the game. Next, the cascading events. Oy vey, uh, these generally suck. There are the occasional good one, but generally not great, okay? Um, the shuffle all of these and randomly place four face up. Uh, I'm, uh, ignore that, I misread it, let's try it again. Shuffle them, place four face down in the year one stack, three in year two, two in year three, and one in year four. So four, three, two, and one. We'll stop there. Four, 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, and one. There we go. Place the unused cascading events face down. You may have to add more. Again, I keep them face up next to the board. So these will be over there and I can shuffle those up. So no big deal. And again, honor assist. It's a solo game, right? Slash co-op, whatever. Um, I'm not going to ruin my own enjoyment. Okay. So that's it for that. Then it says, finally, remember those four, uh, it, uh, exceptional uh, White House resource cards that we didn't draw. We got the NSC one up there, but these are the other four that remain. We're gonna shuffle these up. Peanut Gallery, I need you all to pick a number, one to four. And we're gonna put that uh, in the year two stack. And the rest are back in, the, back in the box, we won't use them. So one to four, y'all pick a number. Then while y'all are doing that, you shuffle each individual deck. Uh, let's see. And then obviously the year two will get added to the year ones, the year, you know, as you get there, but we'll get there. That's part of, a, you know, in the, uh, in the turn sequence flip book, it's going to instruct us to do all that. So don't worry about it. But all we have to do is shuffle those and then the very last thing is seeding the cascading events. And that was what uh, Doug was referencing earlier. Let's see, the first one to get three was four. One, two, three, and four. We will not look at these. In fact, we know that the events are out of play, right? And those, I don't want to see what we didn't choose because it's a surprise. So I will not look at those. This will go into year two, I believe it is. Let me double check. Yes, year two. There. Done. Now we need to shuffle these. So I'm actually, you know what? It's all right. If you're here, you might as well, right? So this is this is uh, my little shuffler. This works great, by the way. Um, yeah. So anyway, not you can sort of see it. So we'll take the one, and I'm actually going to what was it like top five cards? Not looking at it, but nope. Top six cards. So the top six cards are other stuff. So I'm gonna kind of randomly throw those in. Oh Jesus, this shouldn't be this hard. Top six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then just mix them up a little bit and then they will get mixed up thoroughly. I'm just going to do this for year one. I'm going to do the others off camera. Y'all just take my word for it that I'm gonna do this. And then I will seed it and then we'll talk about the overview again. A little bit more in detail and a little bit. There's not a lot left to cover. By the way, this thing does not damage the cards. So Highly recommend getting one, or you could just, you know, make stacks. You could riffle shuffle if you are, you know, sick like that. Ah, get over there. There we go. All right. And then. There, and we will cut. There we go. So that is year one set up. Year two, year three, year four. So, two, three, and four. And you can tell they are looking at them over here because they're just smaller. So I will do that off camera. Take my word for it. Okay. Now, seed cascading events. According to the selected difficulty level, draw a number of cascading events one at a time from the cascading events pile that you set aside. So that pile right there, we're gonna go ahead, shuffle this up while I read the rest of this. 
Uh, for an easier game, draw two. Ah! Uh, normal. For a normal or harder game, you draw three, but we're only drawing two. These represent longer term world events that are in progress as you begin your term. The world you inherit from the previous president. Reveal each and perform the From the Crisis deck event for each card sequentially, exactly as if you'd drawn them during the game, with the following three exceptions. And I'll cover those in a minute. Okay, so I've been shuffling this. We will go ahead and there, and we will go a thin cut there. And now we're going to draw two. One and two. We will do them in that order. And now this deck will come back over. And again, face up over there. I'm not reading them, but the whole reason for it is so I know which deck is which and they don't get messed up. Okay. All right. So we have the two cards. Here we go. We have instability, civil wars, and rogue states. Okay. Now, note the different colors and the different things over here. Before we go into this, it says that it's a cascading event, okay? And what I want to point out is, if you look over there where the deck is, now that we have it set up, a C is the crisis deck, reshuffle is the R, deck two, deck three. This has nothing to do with years. The year two, year three, year four, which are technically off screen over there, but they will be off the board. These piles have to do with the crisis cards, okay, as well as other cards. Um, and in fact, I will show you one example of difference. So give me one second here. There we go. So from the event deck. So note again, C, R, two, and three, okay? Okay. Now, these are not in our game. I don't think I'm giving away too much by showing this, so whatever. The important part here is, oh, come on, stop acting up. Here, we'll just do it like that. Is, notice the D and the R. This event, do it and then discard it out of the game. This one, the bottom one, is do it and then put it into the R pile or the reshuffle pile. So, pretty straightforward. The D would be out of the game. The R would go into the reshuffle, okay? As it is, this is the actual card that we have. Now, ours, note, you draw it, then you put it into the two. Then you put it into the three the next time you draw it, and then you uh, put it in the discard. Okay, so... There are three exceptions, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but C, if you drew it from the crisis deck, so in other words, as if we had, so we are doing that. Roll a d10 to identify a random region. Each region has a number on it, on a d10. So not CONUS, not Russia, and not China, but all the others have random numbers. The Middle East has four and five, eight and nine for Africa, etc. okay? Then make a stability check for that region, okay? Now, what the things that we ignore are any place tension on cabinet focus, meaning if it tells you to place a tension marker on the cabinet focus, don't do that during these two cards at the uh, when we're still setting up the game, ignore that. The second thing we ignore is public approval results. So anything on the public approval track, doesn't affect us because this is stuff that's already been going on and we already come in at 40% like us. 60% is in. Eh. Okay? So we ignore that. The third thing we ignore is anything to spend action points. Why? Because we ain't got no action points yet. We haven't been told how many we get. Now, we know we start with 20 plus any others that we may acquire uh, through attributes. But as it is, we don't have action points. So if it says to spend action points, we ain't got them. So we skip that. Common sense, right? All right. However, 
None of that does it say to do. So we're gonna roll a D10, make a stability check for that region. If we pass it, place an unstable uh, counter from our, um, you know, that sheet with all the counters on it. If it fails, plus one regional crisis in that region and place a civil war counter in that region. Okay, so we have our first roll of the game and the game ain't even set up or started yet. All right, now, the game comes with two dice, a six-sided and a 10-sided. These are good dice. These, these roll well, we're gonna keep those. Now James, being a sicko, he added those, but we also added these. I'm gonna change the color on these, I'm gonna actually have different dice, uh, to be able to mark how many actions we have and certain things that are going on. They're gonna be counters, but James may also roll these uh, as my senior advisor. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so. All that said, let's go ahead. We need to roll a 10 to figure out which region this is going to come into play on. So here we go, rolling. That is region number six. Region number six is Central South Asia. So it is one for the Eurozone, two for Eastern Europe, three for Central America, four, five, six, uh, Middle East. Central South Asia is six. South America is seven, Africa is eight, nine, and the Asia Pacific is 10. So Central South Asia, which is what we rolled. So as promised, now I gotta figure out what I did with it. We are happening here in Central South Asia. So I told you we are going to have the uh, presidential dog there. Uh, Central South Asia, that is where we are working for this. We now need to make a stability check for that region. Stability, what is the stability? Stability is currently at five. So as I said, low numbers are good, bad numbers or high numbers are bad. We would like a five or lower, okay? So on a D side, uh, D10, we need a five or lower. That's a three, that's good. Okay, so we succeeded, we passed, because five or lower, right? So now, getting back to our card. There we go. Okay, getting back, we passed. Place an unstable state counter in that region. If we had passed, the regional crisis would have increased and would have placed the civil war counter. But we passed, so unstable state, okay. So we will grab an unstable state, which again is the back of the Civil War. We will place that there. However, if we had failed, that would have bumped up to three. If it had already, let's say we had rolled uh, coming over, let's say we had rolled Middle East and we had failed regional crisis, that would then trigger immediately before the game starts. That would not have been uh, good. However, we just added an unstable state. It's not great. It's not great, let's be clear, but, okay. Uh, by the way, Charlie just said, uh, I kept yelling at my wife while playing this, like, I'm taking out terrorists in Yemen. Can you let the dogs out? I get that, that's funny. That is really, really funny. All right. So now, we have, as if we had drawn this card from the crisis deck, right? When you finish performing these events, place each card in the two space on the game board. This will seed the cascading event two space on the board with two or three available events, depending on difficulty, so that when you draw a two or three counters from the draw cup during the game, you'll have events in place to advance. Now, before I do that, this is a cascading event. This is gonna hang out. Whenever it's in the two or three, now, instead of doing this, we are doing this. So the next time, and this is, this is public knowledge, okay? So here is roll a D10 to identify two random regions. In each, if there's no unstable marker in that region, place one. If there is a civil war, not a, fees, a ceasefire counter there, roll a D10, keep it there, replace it with a rogue state. Like, it just gets worse. But this will now go into the two. And note, they will go, they can go face up or face down. You're gonna shuffle these whenever you have to draw one anyways. 
So I keep them face up just, again, make sure I'm not mixing anything up. That makes sense? Okay. All right. Next, our second one that we have that we drew. What do we have? North Korea infiltrators attack the ROK infrastructure. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. By the way, for reference wise, these have a number in the top left and, and some kind of flavor picture on the left. That's cool. Increase the North Korea, South Korea conflict track by one box. Okay, fine. I suppose if we have to. So conflict. Whoop, that goes up one. Okay, so that's there now. Uh, remember, the game ends if we hit that and North Korea is there. Otherwise, they just go to war. Not that either of those are good things, so that's not great. Add two tension counters to North Korea and the ROK. Great, so we're adding four. And a te tension counter to Japan and China. So that's a total of six. Okay, we're going to stop there. So, coming now over to... There. We're going to have to add two to North Korea and the ROK. They each already have one, so we're going to be adding two more. Again, not looking at what they are, just trying to make sure they're face right. So placing one, two, and they happen to be facing, well, one did. Come on. I really got to get a... There we go. I can feel it. One, two. So there's three, there's three. We also add a tension counter to Japan and China. So we're gonna add one here and one right up there. So the first one is going to go there into Japan and the second one is going to roll on up here and add a second one into China. We got our work cut out for us people, all right. If you wish, you may spend two action points. Remember what the third thing it said to ignore? If it says spend action points, you can't because you ain't got none. Um, yeah, but theoretically, if you wish, you could spend two action points to move a single Marine unit from the US military assets. So US military assets, that's here. So moving a Marine unit from here uh, da, 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 to the ROK and move any one carrier from the Indian Ocean or CONUS U.S. Forces box to the Asia Pacific region. That's a whole lot of words. What does that say? That means take a Marine unit and put it, where did it say? To the ROK. So literally, that would be coming on over and doing that if we wanted. We could. We can't because we don't have the action points. I'm just hypothetically, placing that there, and move a carrier from the Indian Ocean, Indian Ocean, y'all can see is right there, uh, or CONUS U.S. Forces, which is that one right there, uh, to the Asia Pacific region, so into here, to help in case there's a war. But as it is, we are not allowed to do that, so therefore, this will go back, and done. So there. Now, when this comes back to haunt us, if the North Korea, South Korea conflict status is one or two, it is currently three, by the way, increase it by one box and add two tension counters to both North Korea and the ROK, which is South Korea. If it's three or higher, move it to five and start the war with North Korean surprise. Nothing good about this this sucks. No, um, if we spent two action points, but per the rules, ignore any instruction to spend action points for here, seeding cascading events. So we're not allowed to do that. But know that we are currently at three here, which means if this card comes out, which could happen early on, they go to war. 
That is really bad. So this now will go into the two deck. Does not matter which is on top. Because when it says draw a uh, cascading event, what's going to happen is literally, we're going to shuffle these two cards, whatever. Y'all are going to pick one, a number. And we're going to do it, and then we're going to flip it over. And when we do so, when we flip it over, we are going to say, hey, we now drew it from the two or three. We're going to do this part. And then once you have done that, then it's going to go back into the next one. So it came from two. That will then go into three, and the two will stay there, so on and so forth. And then after it happens again from the three deck, we'll shuffle the same idea. Then it goes into the discard. That is how that's going to work. But as it is, those go into the two deck, and it's all set. And we are now officially ready to start. And we will start tomorrow at 10 a.m. by opening this book, running through that, and then starting right here. So that, folks, is how that works. So there is a complete setup there. Now, quick overview, okay? Quick, I promise. E even, even for me, I promise it'll be quick. Okay, take my word for it. Okay. So on our turn, we're going to do this part. And it says, perform beginning turn sequence. Page four for the, uh, of that. Okay, cool. This only happens on turns two and four, meaning years two through four. This will not happen Monday or Tuesday. This will only happen on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Not on turn one. And then we start here by improving strategic, well, okay, we start here, but we skip these, go down there, set the focus, so what we're going to be doing is going through this, and then I get one action. So the POTUS gets one, and then for every cabinet member. Now, the, remember, the cabinet member, each one, I get to choose from the master charts here, one action, however, because we're amazing, and y'all saw us draw well. Uh, two actions, two actions, two actions, two actions. So I get one, meaning I can do anything on any of those charts. The VP gets to do two of them. However, some of them are going to be limited to once per activation, whatever. Same, same, same. Then after we are done with all of that, then we are actually going to start activation phase one, meaning we're going to roll a D10 and then Russia or China X. Whichever one we roll, we will then bust out that book. That book says whether it's China or Russia. So in our case, it will be one of these two books we will do in its entirety for that step. Then I, anytime it says any, that means me as POTUS. So I could do three of the POTUS, uh, of the presidential actions. I could do a diplomatic a domestic and a presidential. I could do two presidential and a military. However I want to do that, I choose. Then the cup of death starts happening. If I draw a chit, or I will draw a chit. Here we go. I draw this chit, let's say. Okay? And this says, draw two crisis cards. However, if, let's say I had drawn this one, there, draw two crisis cards. Two of them off the crisis deck. Notice the little plus. That sucks. That means if there was a plus, draw again. Do that. Do, do those two cards. Then draw again. Okay. Here. NSA. Do whatever that says. Two cards for that. And then draw again. These plus draws suck, usually. Hey! Then it says, draw two cascading events with a plus. However, note, there are no more brown areas, meaning even if you drew a plus here, it doesn't happen. So we're going to draw two cascading events. Oh wait, what are those? Those, meaning we're going to shuffle them up and they will happen in whatever order we draw them in. It will be those two. Uh, obviously some of these might have added to it, whatever, you get the idea. Then, after we are done with this, and probably Korea goes to war, then we're going to 
one of these allies and rogues will activate and we will go through step A, B, C, or D depending on which one we draw. Okay, easy enough. Then POTUS and cabinet focus, meaning we're going to do this again. Then, hey, we lose media. Okay, then two domestic actions specifically off the master action. And then legislative, hey, we can relieve pressure. We don't worry about that anymore. We start trying to pass bills and stuff like that. And then the pressure comes back, draw another chit. If you draw multi uh, pluses, doesn't matter because there's only one spot. Then you do the FNI, Focus National Intelligence. And then I get to do any four diplomatic and or military, only off of those two master sheets. Once that's done, then we come back up here, do, 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 do it. And again, everything is spelled out in this book. Now, the only thing I think left to cover, how do you win, how do you lose? Okay, we've covered, if Russia and NATO go to war, we lose. If China, Japan go to war, we lose. If Korea, the Koreas go to war and North Korea's at five, we lose. If Israel, Iran, if Iran is at five with their nukes and they go to war, we lose. Let's see, if the uh, lingering domestic issue, it, it doesn't, it's not specific, it's something that's going on in house. If that ever drops down to here, we lose. Uh, any other way that we lose? I suppose we can get impeached. I haven't encountered that yet, so I don't know. So if we don't make it, to the end of our fourth turn. And the other way that we can lose is influence. Now, China and Russia, respectively, have some number of influence counters. This is just a tracking chart. Use one of the influence markers, because there's plenty there. If Russia ever gets to there, we lose. If China ever gets to there, we lose, and Russia wins slash China wins, okay? Um, Russia, however, also has some other, other stuff. So there's about 734 different ways we can lose. How do we win? Make it through four years, and then we'll figure out whether or not we're reelected. This just in, even if we are, we're probably, we, we probably are not gonna do another four years, but I digress. Then check out the legacy points, depending on how many points we have here. And reference, compare us to historical presidents and see how well we did. But I would call that a W if, you, if we survive. So that is how the game works. And then activation two, three, four, final activation. And then do it all over again three more times. All right? So. Oh! Oh! Hold on. Uh, Mike says, it says ignore the AP expenditure, not to ignore the event. Oh, so I could have done that. I could have deployed units. Well, I mean, why wouldn't I? Okay, let's roll that back a moment. A moment. Let me get that card back. So we are going to do that. So it says, yep, right there. Hold on. Ah. So, okay, so here you go. Here, here's what, not, 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 not complaining, mind you. I really am not. However, ignore any instructions to spend APs. Says at this point, you ain't got any. But it doesn't say to carry out the action. So to be clear, I thought you just ignore any instruction. I, I, I see what you're saying, Mike. So, okay, I'm gonna follow what Mike says. Okay, so Mike said we can do it, just don't spend the APs. I would say that's, that, that, that feels too nice, but I'll take it, okay? All right, so real quick, move a single Marine unit from the assets to the ROK. Yeah, we will. And it's deployed, so because, sorry, because it's deployed to the ROK, it goes on the three side and it, uh, go ahead and gets on under there like so. Okay. Then, if you wish, 
uh, and move any one carrier from the Indian Ocean or CONUS to the Asia Pacific. So from the Indian Ocean, so I could move this one over there or, and I think I will do this, I will take the CONUS one and move it, where is it? Uh, no, to the Asia Pacific region, which means we now have two carriers over there. All right, so we are allowed to do that. That's why it's nice having a developer here. Thank you, Mike. Okay. <laughs> Gene says, Mike has spoken. Hey, look, I, it's beneficial for us. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying, trying to follow it as written. Okay, so there we go. All right. Yeah, if it's legal, why not? Okay. All right. Um, so that's it. We are ready to rock and roll. Um, I am stupid excited. If y'all can't tell, I am really, I've been looking forward to this, to do this with y'all for years, legitimately. Now, again, I've played through one year twice. And so I haven't, I haven't gone past, but I've seen most of the things, but there are still things I haven't, won't have seen. So I'm really looking forward to y'all uh, taking the journey with me. This is by far the most epic thing we've ever done here at Heavy Cardboard. Super excited about it. It's not going to be for everybody, but I, I do think y'all are going to enjoy this. And having James here and he and I kind of co-oping this is a perfect way to play this. I would highly recommend. So check it out. Join me on the journey. Join us on the journey. Uh, every day, 10 a.m., 10 hundred Eastern Time, uh, Monday through Saturday, we're going to be rocking and rolling. Tomorrow is the first half, so activation, uh, the, the special activation, activation phase one and two. Tuesday will be three and four, as well as the end of turn. Then starting on Wednesday is a full year, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that is it. Uh, yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully you all join me. Um, I, you know, I know everyone's going to be at work so on and so forth, but uh, have it on in the background. We appreciate it. We appreciate the thumbs. If you all enjoyed it, it, it helps the channel. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and consider supporting the show, patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. It literally, without that, the lights aren't on. It, like we, I ain't doing this without that. So I really, really appreciate it. Again, big, huge thank you to Tony Curtis uh, for having, uh, uh, given me his copy of Mr. President so that I could do this for y'all. Uh, big thanks to Gene and Mike for designing and developing the game as well as hanging out with us. Hopefully y'all can spend some time with us throughout the week and heckle. I appreciate that. I welcome the heckling. And uh, obviously any kind of like rules quite like that is a perfect example of why having y'all here in chat is really, really helpful. To everybody out there that's played the game, I certainly appreciate the input and, and opinions. And anybody that is just out there and wants to watch and wants to have input, please, let's have fun. This is supposed to be fun. Let's see if we can uh, make it all four years together, shall we? So I will see you all 10 a.m. with bells on. So that's 1,000 here, 1,600 across the pond. Let's bust out some Mr. President, shall we? All right, cheers, y'all. Have a great rest of your day. Go Cowboys. And I will see you all tomorrow morning. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Ah, this is awesome. I cannot wait.